time you're ready. Good afternoon and welcome to the Beverly Hills Unified School District Special Board Meeting. It is June the 7th, 2022, 4.58. We are returning from closed session and I would like to ask Mr. Eli Wilmer to lead us in the pledge. Thank you. The right hand of the flag of the United States of America. So moved. Right second. Motion was made by Mr. Marco, seconded by Mr. Raymer. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Raymer? Yes. Aye. Excuse me. Motion passes 5 0 with a deferential vote from Mr. Raymer. Uh, do we have any public comment? No. Mm -hmm. Mr. Raymer, would you like to speak? Uh, there's no uh, action closed session. Um, we will move to consent. Oh, yes, consent calendar. So I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. Oh, I'd, like I'd like to withdraw my motion to move the consent calendar. Is that okay. uh, let me uh, let me rephrase that. So, um, yeah, how do I propose the whole consent panel? How would I make <laughs> So so let me let me approve the, I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar um with discussion for items one and two. Well we're gonna make it we're gonna make motions. Just we can put it on the floor. We're gonna take action on items one and two. Right. So, and so normally we don't discuss consent items. So I'm making my motion to allow the discussion of these consent items. Yeah. Normally, sure. I'll second. Um, I was only pulling those because I had tried to find, and I may have overlooked it, but I was trying to find how much those painting, the painting and the floor services were going to be. And I wondered if there had been bids out on it, and I wasn't able to find that. So I'm asking that question. Ask you to pause first just so we can vote on the motion that was made okay. uh, by Mr. Margo and seconded by Mr. Hanani. So, all those in favor? But there's nothing to vote on. Well, you made a motion. Right. I made a motion. Now. Yeah, we made a motion and then there's and then there's some discussion. Discussion from one and two. So, she has to go back down the discussion. Okay. Yeah. So, I've, I've never seen this happen before. I don't think. I, don't, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm going to. I'll defer, but I, I I have a question about this process here. I mean, I think we should just go straight to approval and make a motion to approve and then go to discussion for we did. We uh, did. I made the motion okay. for approval with discussion, with without discussion. Do we have to I mean you didn't you didn't you didn't like need to say okay. with discussion. You can always have a put discussion before you vote. I suggest that we make a motion for the approval of each of these items separately and we'll go to discussion on each of them and then vote before you. Mrs. Marcus, well, just or you can a mean question about both. Right. But typically, if you pull something from consent, you know you you have a separate motion and separate. discussion about right. That. That's, that's why I didn't pull it. That. That's why I made the motion since just it's a, a discussion. Since it's a general question about both, could we withdraw one? Yeah, one. not a bad idea. Okay, Gabe, I'm going to withdraw my motion. You accept my withdrawal? <laughs> I know what the sure. I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar minus one. item one. Yes. Wait, you. Yeah. I want. Am I going to get an answer? To yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going to get an answer to both of them. Yes, you will. Okay. All right. So I'll second. I'll second. Approve it. Motion was made by Mr. Margo. <laughs> Seconded by Mr. Marcus. Uh, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Motion passes five. Zero. Now I will make a motion. Mr. Uh, Raymer. I'll make a motion for approval of G2, the bid for the floor renovations of BB and Hawthorne. Okay, so the same question I had with the first one. I have a second on 
that one. So wait, we're not just that. We got a, we need a second. You have a second? I'm not allowed to. I'll second. Great. The motion okay. was made by Mr. Margo and seconded by Dr. Stern. All those in favor? Well, no, now we have discussions because we pulled the consent out. Okay. So now, now we're showing this discussion. All right. Uh, I know you already approved the first one, but I that was also the one that was, they were sort of tied together. I wanted to make sure that these had been put out for bids and that we were taking the best bid and what was the bid uh, that we're doing that job, those jobs for. That's simple questions I wanted to ask. Well, the information wasn't an attachment. It was uh, in the rationale um, on uh, the, the agenda. So it wasn't a separate can, attachment. Can you tell me what they were? Yeah, I can read sure. it. Do you got it? Can okay, okay, you want to show it? It's Marcus. It's here. Okay, there they are. Okay. For both. We only had one on that, right? Only got one bid on the second one? No, that was the winning bid. Well, that, that only shows one bid, if, if, but then the other one, they showed all the bids. I can, if you would like me to read into the record what the, the rationale is, it would probably... Maybe, that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. Why don't we start with that? So for item number G1, let me read this into the, to the record. After conducting a post-bid conference and reviewing the bid documents, Staff is recommending to award the bid to Color New Company, Woodland Hills, as the lowest responsive and responsible bidder for Beverly Vista Middle School in the amount of $190,000. And Mar Mariscal Painting Incorporated, South El Monte, for Hawthorne Elementary School in the amount of $190,000. The project is anticipated to be completed by August 9, 2022. Bid details are available for review in the purchasing department. That is for G1. For G2, item G2, for the record, after conducting a post-bid conference and reviewing the bid documents, staff is recommending awarding the bid to Genesis Floor Covering Incorporated for floor renovations at Beverly Vista Middle and Hawthorne Elementary Schools in the amount of $363,957. The project is anticipated to be completed by August 9th. Bid details are available for review in the purchasing department. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. That's what I Are there still going to be contracts that come back with this, or this moves forward? Okay. Thank you. Thanks for asking the question. Okay. If there are no further questions, can we have coffee? Okay. Very good. Mr. Laney? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero is preference of those from Mr. That was for number two because yes. number one was, was passed. Yes. Okay, that brings us to planning and facilities item H. May I have approval for the amendment of a number eleven BC back agreement between Beverly Hills Unified School District with Pro SPCM Incorporated DBA for Western Structures for Beverly Hills High School B1 and B2. Modernization for retaining wall number five, shoring added to the guaranteed maximum price of the site access and utilities modernization. I will make so, that motion. Did anyone make a second? I will second. Mr. Margo seconded. Um, for discussion, did you want to say something, Mr. Margo? No, I just wanted to make sure we had pulled this for council to review. What did you say? You wanted what? We had pulled this originally for council to review, like all of our other. Lease lease back um, addendum amendments. So they have. They have. And all clean. Are we good? Um, Any comments? I have. Wait, do you want to speak first? Uh, they had some questions on the calculation of the guaranteed maximum price and how it, uh, the number was arrived at. So we have someone here from Pro West that may be able to answer that. Right. Is there anything that you just need to? Right. I mean, I think the question for. The numbers that were outside of the guarantee. Numbers. Right, so exactly. I'm sorry. I think it was about um, the south side work. 800,000 right. additional fees outside of the guarantee price. Uh, 800,000 item? Mm -hmm. so. Jeff, would you, are you? Or Mike? 
Pam? Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so are we talking about the non-GMP costs that we showed on the schedule of values? Yes. Are you going to be Okay. So I think I explained that also in a letter that everyone should have. Were there questions in addition to the statements we provided? I, I didn't hear anybody respond. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think we understand. Yeah, I, I have to. What letter is that? I have to that find the letter. Right. Okay. <laughs> so I, I can summarize that. Um, probably not in as much detail as I've given you, but let me find the items we're talking about. Okay, so there's a there's three components to that question, uh, the answer to the question for those non-GMP services. Uh, Amendment 7 started this process with the design and engineering of all the retaining walls, <clears throat> but that only anticipated the original design and there were quite a few revisions by DSA and by the project architect during the process. So this is the final cost to get all the walls DSA approved. That's that's part of the cost. Can I stop you there? Why wouldn't that go to the what was that for amendment seven? That is the added services provided for Amendment 7. So why wouldn't that be attached to Amendment 7? Why is this attached to the Amendment 7 for Retaining Wall 5? So Amendment 11 combines Amendments 7 and 8 and the GMP that will be established in Amendment 11 as a project for, for accounting purposes uh, on the high school campus. So it's it's accounted separately from like, like we did on B1 and B2 versus B3 and B4. So it, and we needed to do that for a couple of reasons. Um, number seven gave us the authority to go and do the design and engineering and Amendment 8 is where we have the general conditions money parked um, that we're offering to use for this Amendment 11 work. Does that kind of make sense to everybody? Yes. It doesn't make any sense for me entirely. I think um, I, my recommendation that we table this item because I think it's more complicated than it appears on its face and that the fact that it's tying the numbers the fact that it's tying amendment seven and eight and eleven together I think um, I'd like to understand that uh, more clearly and what we're committing to by signing on to this amendment. I don't think it's been clear. I don't think it was clear to, to people when they asked that question and I don't think it's a simple answer. Um, so okay. I'm not comfortable entering into this agreement, not understanding the full ramifications of what we're committing to. Um, okay, so just for clarification, um, what I'm explaining is written out in the actual amendment itself. So that is what I thought the legal was reviewing when we tabled this a, a month ago. So we, we haven't changed anything. It's basically the same wording that was in the amendment when we started. I, I don't see it in here in this agreement where it says it's tying it to amendments 11, I mean, seven and eight. So there's a bunch of, you know how these things are are written, President Wells. There are a lot of whereases and on the first page. So 
I think it's the one to the fourth, whereas defines what I'm what I just stated. So so Mike, what, what we're saying here, what I'm understanding is that the reason for the tie-in is so we work under existing general conditions and not creating new general conditions for retaining all the that's um that's correct. Uh, you know, Noah, there's a substantial savings to the district by having us not add more general conditions money to the retaining wall five GMP work um, because there's already general conditions money that was authorized in Amendment 8. And at the time, it was anticipated there would be you know, future work added to that amendment. So if we leave it as it is, and it stands alone, um, we would finish that work and we would basically finish that work and have, you know, money left over that we weren't counting on having left over. Right. I guess my question, um, well, I understand what you're saying. I think, did, I, in terms of discussing with the board, yes, Michelle, go ahead. What well, you're saying, I want to, I'll ask the question after you. I mean, I think that there are, for me personally, I'm not comfortable entering into this agreement without understanding the ties to the other agreements and, you know, how, how this relates to that, because I feel like we're entering into yet another agreement without fully understanding what the general conditions are, what we're entering into in terms of tying together, and then we're seeing that we've this an additional cost that are getting added to the to the GMP and not having a full understanding of that. I when I look at the schedule and I look at the time frame, it's 360 days to do this this work, and that seems like a, a long time as well. And I feel like at this juncture that. I'd like to understand it more fully. I'd like to, I would, I might even suggest that we did this work and, and see what this, you know, this looks like. I, given what we, you know, learned thus far, um, I, at this point, having this many questions, I just don't feel that it's prudent for us to enter into this contract. I think we should, we should wait, we should get our CM on, and we should look at this whole project and, and before we enter into this deep, more deeply, so that we so we know what we're entering into, and that would be my recommendation. Uh, it, it has a long time frame, 360 days to do the work. Uh, you know, there's the additional 80,000 added onto the GMP, and it's tying us to seven, eight, and then 11. And I I want to understand what that means. We're already doing seven. Eight. I understand, but I don't know that we understand what seven and eight means for ourselves as well. Well, it's, it's it's here. It lists the, the scope of work. I understand that you see the scope of work, but we don't understand what's beyond that in terms of general conditions and other things from what we've seen from the audit report and the other things that we've entered into. So we're entering in further to a contract that's... I, I, what's the total amount of this contract? Around 8.9. So we're adding another 8.9 million. I think we should know what we're entering into. You're committing another 8.9 million and you really don't understand <laughs> in 7, 8, and now you're adding 11. Well, you're saying I don't understand? Or... I don't think that we as a district understand what's behind those contracts as, as evidenced by what I mean, we saw. It's presumptuous to say we as a district. I would take a poll and see who actually has difficulty understanding. As evidenced by what we saw on the audit report, I think there's more information there that we should understand <clears throat> before we enter into further. And, and I think if we delay this project much longer and go out to bid, it's going to really have an impact on the rest of the... Uh... Okay, and there, there probably is two other qualifications or clarifications I need to make, um, just so you have the information. You know, we... We presented the non-GMP costs as part of this amendment, but if the work doesn't move forward, we're still gonna need to invoice the district for those costs. So they don't just go away. And the other factor is that the designs were done by a design build contractor um, who, 
as I mentioned in my letter, we we did additional services to provide you with market pricing for design build and design proposed build. So you had the option and it's about, a, it's over $4 million savings to the district. However, one of the fees in the non-GMP fees is to obtain licensing for the design. So if, if the design build contractor isn't hired, that cost will be there. And that's why we're presenting it to you because we all need the rights to the design in order to build it. Whether you're building wall five or two or three or four. That's correct. So all of these costs will need to be paid uh, no matter how you proceed forward. Um, and our opportunity to do this without the charge for the general conditions and to get the work done while we still have staff there for this particular work, um, you know, there's a window that's gonna close and we won't have that option. And the pricing we currently have expires uh, on June 12th. Now- When I look at the schedule, it says 360 days. Is that correct? Um, from start to finish, yes, um, that's correct, which is not a long time for this scope of work, mainly because of the constraints work, working along Olympic Boulevard and the amount of soil that has to be brought in. It's probably in the neighborhood of 600 uh, truckloads or about 8,500 cubic yards of soil. I, I I mean, we're, we're going to have a museum on the, in a month this time, and I think it's prudent for us to wait that month and and have them uh, work with ProWest on understanding this more fully and advising us. Should we go around? Yeah, I'll go. I I, I mean, I I. I generally agree with Mary here, though I want to continue to push the ball forward. I do think we, we, we are so close to having someone new in that can advise us on, you know, all these issues and the path forward. We only have a certain amount of, of uh, capital left to kind of play with. I want to make sure that we're, we'll play with, I mean, to expend on all these different projects. And I wanna make sure that we're making prudent decisions here. I mean, we're, we're sitting chatting directly with, uh, you know, Michael and I definitely appreciate the information that he is, uh, that he is uh, but giving us, but, you know, usually we would be advised here by our bond manager on all this stuff. And, you know, we, we, we haven't had the structure in place. I'm, I'm just, I, we're limited on how much we have here. And uh, I wanna make sure that we're making prudent up of decisions. Um, so I guess the question that I had, uh, Michael, you said that the pricing here expires on June 12th. I don't know if Wade or I see Pam is on this Zoom here. If, you know, uh, but someone could tell us if we, if we delay here by 30 or 60 days, what, what might the financial impact uh, of that be? Um, just so we better understand it, but I, I would like to hear from the rest of my colleagues, but I'm, I'm, uh, as of now, I'm generally inclined to agree with Mary here. Um, I had a couple, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would feel comfortable proving this right now. I think that we had it delayed from the board meeting, or at least I feel like I remember doing it two board meetings ago. I may have again been doing it from the last one. I think that it would be um, okay to move forward with the project and if need be revisit it later. But I think that the, the, the scope of work is pretty clear. And I think that that the we we should be able to approve this right now to get the, the work underway. Okay. Um I, I have some questions and then uh first of all I'm a visual learner. And I don't know how 210,000 for seven and 13,500,000 and, and then they're tied into 11 unless I have someone sit down and really explain it to me because I don't understand that portion of it at all because I need to see how it's tied in and I 
can't, I can't see it this way. So that's number one, but that's beside the point. Michelle, may I help you with that possibly? Well, can I finish? Yeah, okay. then you can help me. Okay, then we have the $800,000, which is something that just came up that I knew nothing about. And I, I'd like to know well, what exactly that's for. I know it was explained, but I, I, again, I don't understand it. If someone can explain that to me, I, is that is that going to be added to the eight million nine hundred forty one million dollars? Um, no, that that's included in the total of Amendment um, Eleven, Amendment Seven and Eight. Of, that's we, part of eight million, right? I don't have to worry that that is going to be something more. It's going to be included in. Because it's all the discussion started with it's outside of the guaranteed max price. It's, huh? it's outside of the guaranteed max price, but it's part of the total amount. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. And then I also and I'll let you explain this to me. Uh, we're going to start in June, or I, I, actually beginning in August of 2022 this year. And you're going to finish in August uh, 21 of 2023, approximately one full year to do this job. But then I look up at the top and I see some more uh, time and then I see another final completion. Now I see I, I there is no final completion then until December 12th of 2023. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, on, on all these schedules, we allow for unknowns or float time or weather impacts, but in all likelihood, a project of this nature should be, it will be substantially complete by the end of next summer. By the end of next summer? Yes. Give or take. Okay, and I'm, would you explain what you're... Yeah, my understanding, and Mike, you can interrupt me at any point here, is that Amendment 7, which was already approved, right. is for the designing of the shoring, because they're going to be trenching all the that, stairs. That, that, okay, design I, I that. okay, so that's, and that shoring is related to the work being done in Amendment 11. That's why it ties, both amendments tie into each other, right? You can, uh, you can. Yes, and. Let me add to that, Noah. The Amendment Seven, we were we were directed find a design build contractor to do this work. So that's how we started. So it's the shoring and a contractor to do all the retaining walls. Right. Um, so there was no design for any of the retaining walls. The design was not done through DLR or their engineers. Now they do a final approval of the design in, in concert with DSA, but we did all the work getting the design build contractor on board and monitoring their progress and managing all the consultants during this process. So that's where the added services come from. And that's where amendments started. And the reason it grew from there was because we realized shortly after we got going that we could save the district a lot of money by also looking at an option to manage all the trade contractors instead of turning it over turnkey to a design build contractor. So the $210,000 is already paid for, but we don't have to worry about that in amendment number 11 of having a design. Is that what you're trying to tell me? That's right. This squares all the design, engineering, pre-construction, and licensing fees for all of the walls, all the walls. Two, three, four, and five, and if there's a one, I don't know. There's no, there's not a one. I'm not sure how that happened, but yes, it's two, three, four, and five. Okay. All right. So... But we've already approved, now I understand you're explaining how number seven is tied into 11. Right. Yeah. Got that, got a picture. How is 13 tied into it? 13 does a couple of things. There's a, a site lease amendment that's part of, uh, it's actually amendment uh, eight that we're talking about, right? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. I'm at eight. 
Okay, so Amendment 8 does a couple of things. It clarifies the area for the site lease, which gives us uh, access to the areas outside of the buildings. And it provided a budget approval of general condition costs. And it's obvious to us we're not going to spend all those costs. So we thought it would be a good idea to offer though that savings as part of the general conditions to do retaining wall five, because it seems like a good idea to do retaining wall five right now, because when ARV is done, you're going to have basically exposed unstabilized soils that have certain contaminants that should be covered. You're going to have potential um, hazard areas <coughs> with 15 foot fall um, zones where people could get hurt. It's just not a good way to leave the job for months while we all regroup on this, where I really think if you move forward, we can get this done in, in concert with them finishing their work and demobilizing. Okay, so are we, I'm, I'm asking you then, are we in jeopardy with the program, not financially or finishing it in any way, if we don't approve this and wait possibly for the next bond manager? Um, the, the impact to you maybe increased prices from the trade uh, contractors. And I think the process is gonna take longer than you may believe uh, to get a new bond manager or, or construction manager up to speed. So if we lose a couple of months, which is very likely, um, it puts us behind schedule in getting our permitting done with the city of Beverly Hills and with coordinating the work with ARB and may make it more difficult for us to do the work without added general conditions. So that's probably a more complicated answer than you'd like, but I do believe there's a cost impact to the district to delay it. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, that was my question really, is what was the detriment if we were to wait? Um, I mean, I can appreciate that uh, the hiring process and the, and the new CM, I mean, that can take some time. Um, I also do think that there are, um, there are delays in general, um, the supply chain notwithstanding. Um, so you answered some of my questions. Um, I have a couple questions on this. I mean, I think for, you know, our goal is to have a new CM on, you know, within the month. And so I think we're, you know, looking at your start date of August of 20, August, starting in August. I understand that you have to get permitting done before that. Um, I guess, you know, I really do want to understand more fully what I understand that what Mrs. Marcus just did with you was really more so clarifying the scope of the work. Uh, I'm more concerned about what's the terms and the conditions behind the work that we're committing to in terms of the dollars and um, and what and what that commitment looks like because that to me is where Gabe's point is about being prudent about spending our dollars. Um, I also want to understand what we're committing to. If we are committing to this, if we're committing to doing wall five with you, are we committing to doing the remaining walls with you as well? Are we, you know, I, I feel like there's many different ways of making things getting this. I, I understand that there's additional costs for general conditions. I don't think that the board is in a position to be doing this negotiation. I, I feel more comfortable having a CM and uh, someone that's representing the board, but you know, I would have questions that if there's general conditions there that are to be used, and you know, can that go towards some of the design build fees that, that were there? Um, can those dollars go there? Or, I mean, I, I, there's different things. I'm not, not gonna speak out of turn, but I, I, I think there's more than one way to look at it. And without having all that information at this point, I just am still, I, I would rather we had someone representing us that's more fully informed that can ask all the, the remaining questions. I just think with even our legal counsel, the few, um, you know, the few minutes that we have with them and the questions that they had, we didn't have, they didn't have complete answers with the information that they have 
been given. And I think that that's why we can take the month to get somebody representing us and have more fully thought to questions about what's behind the scope and what does that mean for us and what we're committed to going forward. Well, I happen to think a month is uh, a very kind of liberal estimate because if we delay this and then you talked about possibly going out for other bids, that bidding process takes, I mean, how long would that take? Five to eight weeks. Five to eight weeks on top of another month. But if that, then that's if we get a CF on board and up to speed in a month. Well, that's the best to do Right. That there's just, there's a lot of ifs um, that would make me be very hesitant about delaying this any longer than we already have. The ripple effect to both the budget and the schedule, the overall schedule, I think would be exponential at this point if we continue to delay this part of the project. Um, so I mean, for that reason, I'd rather look forward with it today. Um, well, I would, uh, I would recommend that we table this item until we have a CM come on. That's my recommendation because we don't have the full information. If it means going out for a bid, then we should. We should. We have not been. And once again, I, 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 I should not. Sense. I know, but you no. keep saying we don't have the information. You need to speak for yourself, President. Okay, I don't have the information that I feel comfortable making. Okay. In the past, when we've made decisions to go out for a bid, we found that we found better competitive pricing. That might be the case, or if we have somebody that's negotiating for us as a district as opposed to just accepting this without having any negotiations and understanding what's behind it. And I don't believe that we're in a position right now where we're having this negotiated for us and understanding the full uh, ramifications of entering into this contract. And I think a month is not a long time to wait to make certain that we're being proven. So my recommendation is that we pull this item. Can I ask one more question about this bid? Yeah, this is a bid. I take it it was put out there, or it was. It was has there been bid. other bids on this at all? <coughs> well, yes, yeah, there's, there's 13 um, trade packages involved in the work, and we received uh, 42 proposals uh, in response to the 13 trade packages. But the agreement is a less agreement. <laughs> I would like to make a motion to withdraw my motion. Right. Do we have a motion on the floor? Yes. Or are we just making a motion to table the matter? I you still have a motion on the floor, so you have to handle it. I'd like to make a motion to withdraw this, and we can make a motion to table if you like, or? Uh, I'll second. No, she has to withdraw the motion first. And I seconded it. And no, I would you second my motion? Um, I'm, I'm in sensing the direction of the board. I'm hesitant in taking this to a vote. At this point, I cannot read two of my colleagues. You have great poker faces. <laughs> so, um, um, so, but uh, no, I think we should go to a vote. I'll say. Um, we'll call for a vote. The vote specifically is to accept the table. this amendment. No, we'll have to accept this. I'll call for a roll call vote. Mr. Rich? <laughs> Mrs. Marcus? I, 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 I'm really torn. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear Eli's vote. It's yes. Just thank you, Eli. I was think I would like to abstain. I feel I need more information. I can make a report. Then I'll say no. I will say yes. I will say no. Mr. Halini? No. I will say no. 
motion does not pass four to three, four to one with a preferential no from Mr. Ray. No, I would say yes. I mean, yes from Mr. Ray. Sorry about that. Okay, everyone, thank you. I guess we can sign off. Thank you for your time. Okay, bye bye. The next item. Thank you, Michael. Okay, you're welcome. The approval of resolution 2021-2022-028 resolution authorizing the district's acceptance of ownership of real property. I will so move. All second. The motion by Mrs. Marcus and seconded by Mr. Raymer. I'll, I'm going to call for a roll call vote. Any well, questions or just, comments? I just want to make a comment sure. this clears up for once and for all the ownership of the piece of land that we have that we had in, with the city of LA and this resolves that once and for all. Agreed. Clears up the, the title issue. The title, the title issue. Cool. <laughs> Um, can I ask a question? Where's the funding for this? This was the, wasn't this the 1.5 million? 1.5 million. million that uh, we actually set aside out of the budget from last year. Okay. So okay. we've already, we've already, I, it's correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, one more question. I see the, I see the legal description, but, but can someone give me the layman, the description of what land we're talking about? Um, it is the area, uh, the football field, part of the softball field, the baseball field, uh, a portion of uh, where B1 sits right now, uh, that area of the high school campus. Okay. Just out of curiosity, how, how well, you know what, you can tell me later, Wade. I, I, but I, well, I am curious, we're on the record, the public is watching. Could we just get a brief explanation of how this happened? Like why LAUSC has any rights to that land? That's a long <laughs> way. Yeah. Here for this yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Can yeah. we get a 30 second version? No. <laughs> it happened the year on the course. It goes way back, it's way a, back. It goes back to clerical error and um, processes not uh, put into place. Um, 85 years ago? In the 30s. Okay. Well, well, I'm glad that I can be part of this historic of a decision, clearing yes. this up once and for all. We re own the land. <laughs> so, President Wells, this gives, you, gives staff the authority to actually sign and accept the property. That's the intent of this resolution. Can we plant our flag anywhere else while we're at it? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have any other questions or comments? All right, I'll call for a roll call vote. Mr. Raymer? Yes. Mrs. Marcus? Yes. Dr. Stern? Yes. Mr. Vargas? Yes. I'm a yes. And Mr. Halimi? Yes. All right, motion passes 5 0 with a preferential vote for Mr. Raymer. The next item is board policies, and this item is, um, I'll introduce it, I think, um, from the time I wanted to join the board and uh, ran to the board, I've always wanted to improve the governance of this board, and um, I'm thinking of that was to uh, update and revise our board policies and our board governance. I think the fundamental thing that the board does is to set direction and to uh, set policy. And our board policy, our board bylaws have not been, most, the majority of them have not been updated since 2009. I would say that in addition to that, when Mr. Halimi came onto this board, he immediately recognized that the board policies were out of date and as well. Um, made it his goal right away to want to update these policies. Um, we, I set, uh, I established two ad hoc committees and Mr. Halimi and Mr. Uh, Raymer and uh, Dr. Bregi and myself on the board bylaw committees as well. I'll, I'll just jump ahead a little bit that um, Mr. Raymer and Mrs. Marcus and myself um, we're on a ad hoc committee for the board governance handbook. And so today we deliver 
rough drafts of these um, board bylaws and the governance handbook. So we'll start with the board bylaws um, to get the board feedback on this. But I think it's important. I think this is fundamental to what we do as a board. And we're really excited for us to have these updated. I think also what we've seen is that uh, Dr. Brady and his staff have been, this cabinet have been working on updating the board policies. And already yesterday, we had got delivered to us the 6,000s. So this is a great momentum that we have going with the district. And I think I, for one, am very excited about that. I think as we are finishing up this fiscal year and we're moving at, with the summer and moving into the next year, and with our reorganization, I'm really looking forward to uh, having a fresh start and really starting on strong footing. So uh, with that, I would say um, everybody got this and we'd like to hear your feedback. We spent, we probably had 10 meetings. I went back and looked, we met 10 times. We probably met probably 20 hours looking at all of these. We started by reviewing our existing bylaws and looking at the most recent updated uh, recommendations from CFBA. We looked at what the differences were. Many times we uh, opted to adopt the CSA, CSBA version because it was already revised and better set or updated. And then if there were any revisions to that version, we did that. So that's the version that you have and I'm sure where the edits are. So uh, I don't know if we want to start by bylaw and just yeah, everyone sense. can get any uh, points that they want to add. So can, can I just jump in with, as far as uh, if anybody's looking um, uh, online, the, uh, the, the the paper that's on the white, we tried to organize this in a way so that the CSBA policy is um, the most current, and then our policy is on the left-hand side. There, there have been a couple of glitches. Uh, this is a new uh, uh, system, just much like our agenda in the assembly. Um, this is a little bit glitchy. So um, there's a couple things in here that I pointed out that uh, we're still getting some clarification on. Um, and, uh, uh, and I know our council is going to jump on for any questions uh, right now. Uh, but I also want to point out, too, that if there is something uh, that we don't understand, um, if we decide to go with CSBA, you know, we can come back, too, to look at each of these individual right. policies. So I just I want that to be really clear, too. Definitely. That, I mean, I think now that we've done that, this is a big leap forward. And I really want to thank all of you for supporting and updating the bylaws, because I know um, you know, we couldn't do it. We do it as a board, and it's everybody's everybody's input, and it is our bylaws. Um, we just did the initial first steps to get us to this place. Um, but I appreciate all of us doing this. I think for us as a board, it puts us in a really strong position. So that now every year when we meet, we can just we can stay current on this. It'll be easier for us if we stay committed to keeping these current and making them. As we continue to revise, we'll become more and more our bylaws, and I think that's important. So I just do, I want to thank you all for supporting and um, being a part of wanting to update all of these bylaws. So can, can I also thank the committee that took this work on? Because it's, it's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of minutia. <laughs> I will also echo those same comments. Thank you. Something, something I was never interested in doing. So. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is tedious work, but I think it's, it will make it's us all. Be done. Yeah, it's good. Do it. it's, and you know, it does make you more familiar as you're doing it. So let's start with 9,000. So, so as an overall question, as we go through, so I only have to ask this once, mm -hmm. if like 9,000, is this CSBA language plus our edits? So yes. Our edits are in Greek. No, no, I got that part, but it's, so there's yeah. so the rest I mean, of this, this is the, draft. the rest of this is current CSBA language. For the most part, yes. Okay. You'll you'll see on some of the paper, uh, some of the policies will just say um, CSBA. Keep CSBA. 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 This one didn't. That's why I'm asking for the first one. Yeah. Does that right. mean it's this is keep CSBA with edit? Basically. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's like we added in this. Can I also? Yes, Gabe. Oh, sorry. Apologies. I didn't mean to cut you off, Mary. Uh, one, I wanted to uh, give most of the credit to my subcommittee members as I had to. I missed uh, a number of the meetings, <laughs> subcommittee meetings. So uh, I want to thank my subcommittee members for doing a brunt of the work. Uh, but I am really excited to kind of dig into this. As Mary said, it is a rough draft. I have comments and I was on the committee. So 
you know, this will be a, uh, this will be a kind of a free flowing conversation. But um, in terms of clarity, Dr. Breggy, um, can you, can you clarify, because I'm even a little bit confused on this? Have we, have we removed any sections from consideration from the previous bylaws? Like I remember, and I could be totally wrong, but I thought there was a superintendent section. And when I was going through this, I didn't see it. Did we remove it? Am I confusing the bylaws with something else? I just want to make sure that we're, we're uh, that we have taken note of all of the old sections before we kind of give the committee's uh, first kind of recommendation here. We didn't remove any sections. We, if anything, we added sections that were not here in our bylaws that were since then seen added. Right. I, I Great. Don't want, Good clarification. So we, there's, there were some glitches along the way, which I can point out when we get there. They were minor, um, uh, and, and they, they felt kind of later in, uh, in this series, the 9000 series. Um, uh, and I also want to just point out, too, that uh, there's some overall um, uh, changes that we'll be making. Um, there were suggestions about uh, pronouns or uh, suggestions about capitalizing titles. And so, um, you know, I want to just uh, kind of redirect us away from making those types of uh, edits because uh, the CSBA people will be able to do that for the entire document. I would like to make a comment. Okay, you can't ask a lawyer not to make those kind of comments, uh, Dr. Breggy. I'm like all over those. I'm just kidding. Uh, no. Sorry, Dr. Shaw. Okay. One of the things that is confusing about the purple copy, which is our bylaw, the new law that is being considered, or the page that's white that's considered that incorporates both, is dropping something that I still don't have an explanation for. And that is what CF stands for and what all these little, like, uh, under setting the direction, CF, CF, CF are all dropped in the new copy. And I'm just wondering what's going to happen to them. And that's, but I, they are being dropped in that copy. And it's throughout the whole book, throughout all the bylaws, we have dropped something that's like CF 6141, CF 6150. It's a cross reference, and we're just adopting what the CSBA version is recognized for. There are references to other sections. Those are cross or, references? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, so and that's what I, I will tell you that the, the difficulty in this no, uh, is that oh, no, some of them. Just, just with the policies itself, keeping the policies up, up to date uh, themselves, and then having cross references as well trying to be updated, they're, they really get. Um, uh, very complicated and easily, um, you know, outdated and incorrect. So they've removed a lot of the cross. Okay, that was my question right. about that. I wanted to point right. out. One other thing that I would add as a point uh, to think about as we go through these changes, and this is what we did as a committee. Like, as we looked at the two different, we looked at our original, we looked at what CSBA has now recommended, and unless it was something that was materially different than what we wanted. We left it in the CSBA language because moving forward, if CSBA makes a change or we make changes going forward, there'll be less language to change because it will match what the CSBA version says. So it makes it less work for us going forward. So if you, so in particular, Michelle, if you, if it's saying materially the same thing, we prefer to leave the CSBA language because it just, as if you look at other ones, it's, they know they're doing. It, it's just easier going down the road in the future if we want to update. It already has that language. We're not going to rewrite it again and then rewrite it again. Yeah, and unless there's uh, something unique to our school district, like um, when, we, when we start going through the uh, instruction that um, you know every right, school yeah. district has you know, different yeah. Right. Policies okay. for instruction. So we okay. try to be so, very um, disciplined about that as we move forward. Okay. So I, I think it, to expedite this process, um, we just hit the bylaw. See if anybody has comments. Exactly. So That's right. I agree. So sure. nine thousand. Does anyone have any change to the nine thousand? I just wanted to ask the origin of adding strategic planning, which I assume is the only change we're doing to the CSBA. Um, because we haven't completed the three years of the strategic plan and can measure its success in the same direction. You know, I'm not sure, plus it's been mired by COVID for a lot of that plan. 
Um, I just want to be flexible with the board saying we can put this in now, but we may in the future decide maybe this is not yes. right. This is not the best. You may take it out in the future. Yeah, I just, yeah. I just, you know, for this district has operated with and without a strategic plan, right. and and no, I think that there's been highs and lows during both times. So I'm not, I, I'm, I'm just not understanding that we can always revisit this. I'm okay leaving it in for now, right. but know that it's to me it's kind of a temporary term. Well, I, I would probably agree with you. But I think a strategic plan is always going to be a part of our uh, yeah, of our district. So I I'm not sure that that's you know that temporary. That would be the only. I mean I would, I would not I, make it. I, I would make one point about that. In, in this past year, our, I would even say two years. In almost every conversation we have with ourselves, amongst ourselves, and the staff, when we talk about things and present things. It's always referenced back to the strategic plan. We are using the strategic plan. Whether you think the strategic plan has met its goals or we need to work better on how we uh, how those goals are set and we're measuring against those goals, we use it as a guide in how we set our direction and how we prioritize um, what our goals are as a board. And it has worked because when staff presents to us many times, it's in accordance with our strategic plan. And we've seen that that has been effective as a way to and keep us focused on what is our priority. Understood. I, I completely understand that, and I'm not even disparaging the current strategic plan. I'm mm -hmm. just I'm saying maybe if, by having this language in there, it makes us take the strategic plan a little more seriously than we want after these three years are done. How we how we form it in the future, right. and and how we prepare mm -hmm. for the you know, next three years. Okay. Thanks. That's right. Um, 9,005, does anybody have any, um, I do not. Okay. No. 9,010, I had a comment about this. Page page. Yeah. I have a comment on it, but it's just a comment. I think that this is a better, this is better than the board policy that we had before. It's more clear and I like it a lot. So that was my only comment on that page. Okay. Uh, I have a comment here, Mary. Um, in terms of the language that we're adding, uh, where we say by stating I'm speaking as one board member not on behalf of the board, I want to make sure that that's clear that that's an example. That's not like a magic language that we have to use and quote uh, every time we make a statement of that kind. No, I, I added the same thing. I put, um, for example, I'm speaking as one board member or personal opinion. As another example, so okay. I don't want it to be that you have to say both. Yeah, yeah. So you are we going to add four examples? So let's just put. I four. would like to add to. Sorry, um, that this is also not just what's speaking, but also electronic means. Like when there's is that? Uh, I think that, that electronic is the part, and then you, there is an electronic. Yeah. Part. No, I know that, but it says here specifically when speaking to community groups should recognize that their statements may be perceived as so. If someone chooses to post, if someone chooses to um, disseminate information electronically, okay. it should be somehow conveyed, not necessarily in that verbatim language, but somehow conveyed that this is we're not speaking on behalf of the board. Right. So Can after we say when speaking to community yes. groups, members of the public or the media, when communicating, when communicating. Right. Where where is that in that address? Individual, you so want to express you're using that? Using the word communicating instead of speaking. Oh, okay, got it. So, yeah, I know what you're talking about. or the media individual board members should okay. recognize that. Yeah, that, that yeah. Okay. You want to change that? For example. I just want to see that clear that you do a post or no, something. Okay. 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 Yes, I, I got it down. Okay. Ninety eleven. Nine zero one one dash B. Any changes or I don't have a question. I don't have a comment. I just want to know one thing. This one now says bylaw nine oh one. One dash B. That's uh, CSBA. Yeah. That's what that means. That's, okay, that's what I was wondering about. Okay. Any it no would it would make you assume there's a 911, 9011A. That's what I was saying. Was there a 9091A? So. Well, it could be too that, and I'll have to look just to cross reference, but this could be just referencing that this is a bylaw and maybe there's an administrative regulation yeah. that's bylaw 9011. This goes on throughout the It's book also now. related yeah. to the Brown Act. We need to check that out. And we'll look to see what the B is, but yeah. I, I think maybe that 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 that's. Okay, moving on. Um, Ninety eleven dash B. We opted to keep the CSBA version. This as is, is all new. 
Yeah, this we didn't. We have didn't have a. We didn't even have a policy. I understand. Yeah. That's why this is blank. Yeah, this is. <laughs> I know. Line. I'm just pointing that out for the I'm people public. in the audience. <laughs> okay. I wanted um, to. I want to have a discussion about the last paragraph here. Um, so I didn't, I get the intent to have all electronic communications go through a district provided device or account. I just, I don't want, I, as a general principle, I don't want things in the bylaws that we're not actually going to follow. Okay. For example, I think we all have personal cell phones. I think we all might get a personal, te uh, you know, a text message here or there relating to the district business, are we really going to copy every single one of those text messages over to a district approved account? I just, I don't want stuff in there that we're not going to follow. So I, I, I want to maybe have something a little bit more reasonable in there um, that, that doesn't have this kind of shall language. It's, you know, it's ripe for not being followed from the day that it's implemented. Well, I think it's to the extent possible. I Right, say, and it says account, so it doesn't mean device. Right. Means, I think it's more like if you got a personal email and you would send on your personal email, you would forward it to your BHUSD email, so you had it. Yeah. So BHUSD. Well, to the extent possible, I I can do a lot of. I mean, a lot of things are possible. Like I just, you, you know, I, I I I don't. I would I. I would like us to be a little bit more specific here in terms of what we're asking for. Um, so if 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 the expectation is if you get an email and your personal email you're going to forward it to your BHUSD email then you know let's just say that this is a very broad language. Have to make a reasonable attempt to to the extent possible electronic communications regarding district related business should be transmitted to a district provide to to a district provided device or account meaning you should try and use your district account. Right. right. So I, I agree right. with that statement. Um, when any such communication is transmitted to a board member's personal device, the member shall copy the communication to a district account, electronic storage device for easy retrieval. I think, you know, that to me is if I get a personal email, what you're suggesting is that if it's text messaging, it's really that last sentence that I have the issue with, uh, because it's any communication that goes to your personal cell phone. Now you have to send a copy of it. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I just, I, I don't want to have things in there that we're not going to follow. Like, let's just say what we actually expect of each other. I'm not going to agree with you, Gabe. I'm going to agree with you. I, so I if you want to remove the, how do you want to change that? You could say when communication is transmitted, the board member, we don't need to wordsmith here if we all like agree on that we can just highlight it and then i guess we could to take it back to the committee to wordsmith and then bring it back again i don't know if you want to actually wordsmith here like there may be a lot for us to to do on this call do you want to change that last yeah no i think i think gabe is right it's 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 yeah. too hard to enforce and it's really I understand the first part of it to the extent Bob, the first part of it, I think I'm fine with. Right. But when it's transmitted through a board member's personal device or account, board members are copy the communication of the district all the time. If it becomes a board issue, okay. it's going to. It's going to become, it, it's going to be on our personal email. Or a PRA okay. request. A PRA, it's all going to happen. So it's, I don't, we think, have that I don't think we need to submit that. Choice, right? we, we have it. Right. 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 But I think I think district related business is the kind of a broad term in a lot of ways that that can lead to, to some of the issues I, I foresee with that. I mean, if you're discussing with a community member, some district related business, I'm not exactly sure if that is the district business that they are referring to, or they're referring to some board business between multiple board members. Right. If, if, a, if a PTA person texts a board member and says, are you coming to me tomorrow? You know, we even talk about it. that's district business, but it's also PTA business. Yeah. So it's it's then do we have to move that to a district device? Yeah, I think so I maybe would... so maybe so maybe we want to say that it has to relate specifically to the board members, you know, work as a board member and not just any district related business. Perhaps make that a little bit more narrow. I would still say that it, you know, we'll find you the person use their district device for district business. Right. But the, the issue is, though, we don't have district cell phones. Well, so it's a account. There's different 
right text in some districts. The district district email, I, I'm not worried about the email, but I think we got that covered. We're all we're all very good with that. Um, it's 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 text. That's yeah. really what we're talking about. Well, then text. why don't we just delete this last paragraph? I'm, I'm fine. Otherwise, you're just. I would I would I would I would leave the first sentence of the paragraph and delete the second sentence of the paragraph, and then if. If, if if anyone feels strongly about it, we can have a sentence that says, if there's district related business that goes to your personal email, then forward a copy to your working, uh, to your DHSV. Keep the first sentence, strike the second. You keep the first? I, I, I think the second sentence is almost inevitable. Yeah. 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 Gabe, keep first, leave second. And yep, I'm go. good. All right, Andy, what about you? Yeah. All right, we're going to keep the first and leave the second. One thing I'll do is uh, just after we go through, because these are still in draft, just as a reminder to everybody um, that uh, you know I'll run them through legal as well, because we're not going to have we're going to have that many changes, but I do want to make sure that I run these by legal just yes, to make sure. I agree. Okay. okay. Moving on to 9100-B. Okay. Um, no, yeah. I have a comment. So I do too. There's a slight change on here that... Um, I'd like to look at number okay. seven. Uh, sign an annual affidavit confirming residency in the city of Beverly Hills. That is not good enough. You have to be in the school district, the, ci the city school district of Beverly Hills. The attendance area. Is that what it's called? Okay. Do you need to be? And the. Yeah. Uh, what's the language? Right? Yeah, it should be the attendance area. Attendance it area? It should be that, well, what, however you will describe that they live. Right. Within it, the, it'll be like the BHUSD attendance area. Okay. So the school that, district attendance area. Although I will say that we do know people who are in the attendance area, they're not in the voting area. That's true. So we have we're to talking do. about board members. Right, but I'm saying if we're talking about the area, board members are elected. Dr. Reg, I just suggest you get legal counsel on that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Little language on that one. Okay. Okay. I'll buy that. All right. For option one, which is the option we chose as a committee, which you can weigh in on, the very last paragraph was a repeat. So if you could delete the after serving that was already in the paragraph before. So which the very last paragraph, last, last and sentence. The sentence in the last paragraph, in that paragraph, just okay. delete it because it was a duplicate. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go back over this election. Are you talking about election of in, officers? Yeah, in that paragraph, just immediately delete the, the last sentence because it was a duplicate. After serving one year as clerk? Delete that sentence. Yeah, it's the last part of the green. No. Oh, yes. No, not no, the last part of the green. It's the last no, part of the last part of sentence. Yeah. No, no, no. This one. After this serving one year yes. as clerk, delete elect this. Yeah, I raised that just as yes, exactly. Which is this last one, right? Yes. Okay. Is that all you had, Michelle? Did you have something on this? I no, no, that uh, that was the only correction I had. Uh, I have uh, I have some comments on. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Domenola, go first. Okay, thanks, Gabe. Um, the sentence says, "This member shall be one who previously has not served in office." Are you in the green paragraph? No, no right below, below the first sentence. That's contradictory to current term. So what you're saying there, this member shall be one who previously has not served in office during the current term. This was in the CSBA. I know, but it should be clear about during the current term. We should repeat that because what that means then is that anybody who's had multiple oh. terms cannot do it again. I, I, think so, it's, um, I think that could be moved up well, to where it says. Let's leave this paragraph as the CSBA wrote it and then just add. Where we get sure. So you want to add current, right? Yeah, it has this not member served in current has not served in office during the current term. This member shall be what? This okay. member shall be one who previously has not served in office during, during the current term. The, so during the current term. term. Right, because otherwise term. people who are elected to multiple terms will never serve in office again. Yeah. yeah. If you don't, you don't promise know. us that's true. Right here. <laughs> Just kidding. During the conversation. Okay. 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 Gabe, what do you have? Good. Noah, thank you. That was it. that was one of my comments. The sentence immediately preceding that one, after serving as vice president, the elected member shall serve one year as president of the board. Um, again, I thought there was that, so I just thought there was a lot of ambiguity here. I'm kind of surprised that this was the CSBA 
drafted paragraph. I, I could poke a lot of holes in this. I think it's a little confusing. Um, I wanted to clarify that, like, not only are they going to serve one year as president of the board, it's going to be the year immediately following the year that the president, you know, expires their term. In theory, one could argue that, okay, like, for example, Noah, sure, you could still be president, but you're just not going to be president next year. Like, so be the intent is, is that they follow the president in the immediately the preceding year. So can you easily solved by adding the word immediately after serving as vice president, the elected member shall serve one year as president. Does that work? Yeah, I, yeah, I need to, I need to. I need to see it drafted again, but I just wanted to clarify that. So uh, if if awesome. if we're on the same page with clarifying that, that's good. But what has ever happened if the vice president, as vice president, is in his last year on the board, right. and he will not then become the vice president? No, so he has to get reelected. In order to right. yeah, you have to get reelected. Yeah. 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 You can't be the president if you're not on the board. That's always going to happen with every other election cycle, whether we're doing three or two. Got it. That's what happens. So that person just doesn't move, but then you have an election. Okay. I just want to point that out. Any other comments? Is there no harm no. to being vice president? Um, Gabe, the uh, <laughs> clarification with the, the, the green section on this one isn't CSBA. This is from our old bylaws because we have that rotation. Basis. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That, that's thank you, Eli. Yeah, shall each year elect one of the members to be clerk slash vice president, and then that last two, those last two sentences, but all the green. Yeah, sentences. you're right. Thank you. So, okay, so that explains it. We 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 could have done a little bit better here because the other thing that I was gonna point out was like we mentioned the clerk in the first sentence, and we say the board each year shall elect one of its members, a vice president, and a clerk, and then we don't mention anything having to do with the clerk again here. We don't even mention. Um, kind of any process. And we also don't mention the election of the president at all in this paragraph. It's repeated later. The clerk has its own section. Refresh my memory. Does the clerk follow the vice president as in, far as? In terms of who reads the meeting if the other two are gone. And that's it. And that's it. Right, but does the election of the clerk supersede the no. election of the vice president no. based no. on? Anyone, anyone you'll see that. All right. Now, I remember seeing something about the taking the meeting. Okay. All right. So that's that's good. Okay, I see, Mary. So you're saying because the clerk and the president have their own section, we don't need to mention them yeah. here. Sure. Well, then I, I mean, I guess I would just move any language referring to. Well, this is the organization meeting, so right. you're, you you're identifying. The, the who's going to be president, who's going to be clerk, because that's what you do in the organization meeting, and then you have your president. So they're they're identified. That's fair. Okay, but but you don't think. Okay, and we do mention the president election above. Okay, all right, fine. You guys still keep um, vice president separate. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doing okay. Yeah. I'm just not that I'm against it. What's the rationale? Because if there's. Like if their vice president, the president doesn't serve the vice president, does it? The vice president doesn't serve the clerk. Does. The way CSBA has it set up is the three, and it just Same, seems okay. like it's nice to have five board members even though three officers. Okay. It's just a nice way All to right. spread it out. Okay. If we have no other. I'm actually Noah. Just a preview. I, I, I'm I'm still not sold on that structure with having the board member be a. Uh, at just serving as another officer, having three officers. If you look at the roles and responsibilities of the clerk, which we'll get to, we'll, we'll talk about it then, but I'm still not sold on that structure. Okay, that's why I asked, but I didn't know if I can sell on that one. <laughs> and does anyone else want to wait till we get there? And then we'll yeah, we'll wait, yeah, it's a different. It's a different. Uh, you can always decide that at the meeting, but we've had a sense of it's going to even it could end up being like a de facto rather than a de jure right. kind of thing. Like generally, vice president and clerk are the same person, but by law state, it could be an extra person if the board so chose. Right, because that's how the CSBA. Is. Right, and when I when I was, I just remember when I was elected because of the rule of the votes in the elections, everything is spelled out pretty much that night. You know, if there's three people elected, you know the order of president, vice president, and then future vice president. You know, we always knew that. So I just 
it just and then we'll I get to it later but if you the clerk does have duties uh, according to Pam that's what's nice about it but the vice president has no duties if the clerk exists <laughs> I, 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 mean, vice, up the, I disagree you're the liaison there's the vice president is the vice I, president. I, I, had brought up I don't mean that. I don't mean that for me. I don't mean that for me. I'm not saying that for me. I don't. Care. I don't need any more things to do. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that. I'll be vice president. If there's not that much to do, that the jobs need to be broken up. But we'll get to that Wait, later. I want to hear what my friend has to say. During the the ad hoc committee meetings, I, I recommended at one point that the vice president be done away with, and we just have a president and a clerk. Considering the vice president doesn't do much, but. I was, I was overruled on that. Well, I don't think you're renaming I, I, that. You, you, I don't think you can have that. The, the vice president isn't required. Oh. But in, in turn, we could replace the vice right. president with the clerk the and just, and just sure. have it be a clerk and then say, oh, they serve as the clerk before being but, president. But, but okay. because of the liaison, I do think it's important to have. Okay. It's you not. It's, nice, but... it's, it's, it's about, I just, are we complicating things? That's all I'm saying. It's, it's not a big It's not, it's not a big um, I don't right want to now. get. We'll get... <laughs> never get. Okay. Great <laughs> with the next one. Did you bring your okay. bed? Nine one one. I know that's why I'm trying to move us along. Nine one one zero B. I mean, really, if you don't have something to change. Nothing. Nine one two one B. That's why we sent this out. Right. Um, if you don't have any changes, can we move on? I I I I I have one change. I put a note here on that that. I think you need one more that says something about preparing the agenda. The president shall perform other duties in terms of the law and board, but not limit to it. And then it does not say anything about uh, preparing a an agenda. You are right. I put, I put that can on the second. Can I just ask that if, if, if we're referring to something to point it say out? Say the number. Yeah, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is 9121B. And it's yeah. number, the first nine skip. And then it says the president should, it. doesn't have a thing. And it doesn't have one in there, and I'm just suggesting we put one in there. I, I think you should make it a, put it as the um, the first point because it's before the meeting. So I would put it um, come work with the superintendent to prepare the agenda. Well, that's that's number two. That's in number the two. It's over the superintendent. Oh, there, it oh, is. there. Okay. Yes, yeah, there. All right. Okay. Forget it. Okay. All right. Done. Okay, the next and one more thing. Sorry, the last sentence on this one where it says when the president resigns or is absent. I do think maybe we should have a definition of absent. There are times that like the president may be late and the vice president, you know, we may ask the vice president to start the meeting. Are they coming? What does absent mean? What's an absence versus a tardy? Like, let's just be a little bit more clear on that. So we don't, we don't, we don't run into a, a parliamentary to procedural problem. It's a, it's a difference between a 0.6% and 0.2% grade deduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a, that's a uh, I think uh, absent uh, meaning they can't be there. Right. That's like, just like, like somebody can't uh, My kids it. are sick. I have to be home. Right. What if they can yeah. attend yeah. virtually? That that's not the absent. That's not the I'm sure we're going to that soon. Okay. That's the goal. Okay. 9122B, Secretary. Just when it's new. This is Dr. Brady. Yeah. And it's perfect the way it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I have an addition, which was to consult with the board president to prepare the agenda. It's not it, it well, does say. Uh, right. prepare, the previous one. Prepare, distribute, and maintain the board agenda. Which Pam does all that anyway. <laughs> So hold on, sorry. I want to be clear here. I don't think that Dr. Breggy is doing that in his capacity as the board secretary. I think he's doing that in his capacity as the CEO of the school district. So I wouldn't say that the that that you know that's the responsibility of the secretary to be yeah. forming the content of the agenda. He's serving as the secretary of the board to prepare the agenda with the president. And it also says he's serving as the secretary to the board yeah, in that capacity. The first section on it immediately. I mean, that's what that's how it is set up in the school district. It's the secretary that, that's on the board. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
Because we're, we'll just we'll address that as a total. Okay. Okay. Um, 9123B, clerk. The only thing I had for this was wait, wait, that 9123B. Nine, nine, um, the only thing I had for this is that the clerk should not be contingent on the same options listed in policy 9100. You know what I'm saying? As far as you're, what I'm saying is that anybody can run for clerk, right? No, you have to be elected. Oh. No, but anybody's eligible. Anybody that's not Anyone president or vice president, yes. it's yeah. not in the order of how they were elected or seniority. Right. Right. So, so I think we maybe need to state that somehow. When you say the governing board shall elect a clerk from its own membership, we're talking about your five board members. Right. Right. But I'm talking about how president and vice president. There are certain there's an order. It's a pecking order. Yeah. But there's no pecking order for the clerk. No. So you mean back in the organization section? Section 9100, yeah. it was option one, but I'm just wondering that right. this, that doesn't apply to this. That it's open for the other three members. Right? Is that what the goal is? If we yeah. if, if we do, in yeah. fact, stay with the separate clerk. Or I guess it would be okay. to, to order. Yeah. And, and Noah, one, one, one addition to what you just said, um, I don't, I, the, the vice president can also be the clerk. Yeah, it's so not it, it it's not that you can only wear one up at officer hat so yeah. uh, i just want to be clear on that yeah, i mean i think i think for sake of anything it's easier to just have a vice president slash clerk i know you guys separated them out i except you've you never did get both what you are both yeah, now, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm just saying is that, and, and, I, and I can tell you this: a lot one, of things one know. job does not impede on the other. Okay, it's so hard. Um, <laughs> okay, point taken. Um, I, I would like to leave item five because we had that in there and we took it out for some reason. It's kind of weird. Okay. So. So I got comfortable with this only with yeah, because of what I just. Oh, sorry. In November, like say we have two new board members coming on, the organizational meetings in December, we can notify. Right. So the I would do that. Oh, it's it's just just superintendent's office. Right. Right. So. Well, notify right. the board members and the board members. Why would they? Why would they? Why would they? This is the This is <laughs> not an issue. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, sorry, well, CSB language that you guys are trying yeah, to Yeah, we're trying to yeah. leave it. So I'm okay with the sec But the I don't understand that, that we would. I don't know if we want to do that. Why? What, leave it? Leave it. I think I, I, agree. I think it should be under the secretary. Yeah. We can Why? make sub, sub point seven. I don't. It's it should be it's under the clerk. Yeah, but it's the secretary be. that does all of the. The other stuff. The, all of the, the agenda is the means. I mean, the secretary the is otherwise not available. No, the clerk is complicated. I did say that duty should go to the secretary yeah. because it falls Maybe. under, you know, maintain the board minutes, That's maintain it. the board agenda, records and documents, everything else that the secretary does. Mm -hmm. But the, the, well, the, 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 the annual organizational meeting will notify members of the time. I mean, that seems to me like redundant. They'll, they'll already be on the board by the time we have our annual organizational meeting yeah, in terms of timing. All right, right. so let's um, take a vote on notifying the board. Let's leave it in, let's take it, give it to the oh. secretary. 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 Sorry, secretary. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Mary, I can't follow. What are we, what are we voting on? Item <laughs> number five, the, the duty number five should go to the secretary instead of the clerk. The secretary being the superintendent. Uh, duty number five under the clerk's responsibilities that's crossed out. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to leave it with the clerk. Noah suggesting moving it to the secretary. So is Eli. Yeah, I have to. And, and the rest of us are. So we're just taking the poll, and then whoever wherever it falls, we'll move it. I would. I would move it to the secretary. One, two. I'm the secretary. secretary. All right, moves to the secretary. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you guys are like, oh, that more difficult. Sorry, right, Pam. Yeah, but, she <laughs> does it, but she does it anyway. I'm I'm glad I'm glad I tried to say it. That's why I wondered why we need it. 
I would take it out all together. But I, I would hardly say, like, let's just move it to the secretary. Moving on, please. 9124 B. Please. If you don't wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mary. I'm still on up in 9123. I, I just want to be clear for uh, uh, at the NOAA, based on what we were talking about earlier, I'm, I'm, I'm only comfortable with this whole clerk position because anyone can be the clerk. So we can ask, for example, the clerk to be the same person as the secretary. I don't, I, oh no, we can't. We took that, well, no, no, we can't do that. Okay, so what I would ask is that we give ourselves more flexibility and we can appoint a clerk being either a board member or we can ask those roles and responsibilities. Can those be done by the superintendent? The elected official no. Superintendent. Okay, leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Let's leave it. 9124 I do have something here. Last second to last paragraph. I don't think it should be at his or her discretion. I think it should be with board approval. The board president may confer with council. I disagree. How about the superintendent? The superintendent can always confer with council. Well, this, this I, well, I, I have uh, I, I, have I um I believe, and this is the way I felt as president is that anything that I wanted to discuss that needed legal counsel, I always called Dr. Bricky and he will vouch for that. I never ever, as I recall, called the counsel on my own right. without notifying him first. So I, and I felt that as an obligation because I used to see all the bills that came in that where someone would call them and I didn't know about, and I was president and I didn't know about it or whatever. And I personally don't think it should be that. I think it, I agree with whoever just said that. I think it should be uh, that the, pre the superintendent should know about it first. Well, I disagree. Go ahead, Eli. I think that the, the <laughs> semi, no, I, I agree with you. I, I don't. Uh, oh, I got an agreement. I think that the well, I board said. president conferring with legal counsel is correct and same thing with that final paragraph saying other board members may confer only half a majority of the board approves of it but um i think we should add a provision in that second and last paragraph saying the board president must first inform the superintendent that they are going to confer with them it should not be at the discretion it should be at the discretion that's, that's a dangerous thing we've had we've had board presidents in the past that it's been a free for all with the attorneys and they've done costs. This is a very slippery slope yeah. because you pick up a phone and call an attorney, you are charging the district. That's it. And without board approval, it's our job to oversee that. Now, I don't have a problem with the president talking to council. I have a problem with the board not knowing that the president is talking to council. So all I'm saying is saying with board approval, the board president or superintendent may confer with district or legal counsel. Period. That's it. That's all that's all you need. So, because yeah, there will be times the president has to get on a call with counsel. I get that. You know, all five of us can't do that. It's against the Brown Act anyway. So um, that's what I'm just asking for. Instead of at her his or her discretion, saying with board approval. Well, I, I I'm not going to go that far. I majority. think that then all of a sudden you've got to convene the board in yeah. order yeah, for the president yeah. to call. But what what issues? Occur that emergent. That well, but I mean, we get. have to call the board to make a to, to vote whether Mary yeah. can yeah, call. Yeah, because we discuss in closed session what's going on legal. Yeah, but what if that's not in closed session? Something that are more timely. I mean, I know I don't agree with that. I agree with the thought yeah, of what yeah, you're getting. You're gonna, you're gonna, to convene with the whole board. To I understand that, but if you don't have some sort of cost control on this, you're okay. Well, I put a cap. Why not just put like limited to a certain number? The of board hours. president may not confer with the legal counsel on first. I like the, the limited number of hours. Yeah, like keep it that. Yeah, but also certain. notifying the superintendent. What, what, what were you going to say? I honestly think that the board president before conferring with legal counsel must discuss or get the approval of or notify the superintendent that she's yeah. going to do so. Yeah, I agree. I think that makes sense. I'm okay with that. Yeah, notifying Michael on the phone. Can you say that again? I you mean, I know as president did not pick up the phone and call Jabari, right, Jabari? Colleagues, can I make this suggestion? <laughs> that, that is correct, Mrs. Marcus. You did always let me know. You had talked to Dr. Breggy. Well, I, I don't know the exact word. It's in the tip of my tongue, but when possible, 
the president um, gets a, um, we'll see. board, we'll see a board, majority board approval. If not possible, notify the superintendent. No, notify the superintendent regardless. That's yes, yeah, what I'm saying. Well, the, yeah. the, the well, superintendent would know. We already but, know that she doesn't have that. That's what I'm saying. That's why I say you don't have it. So I'm yeah. saying when possible, I have more approval. You're asking the superintendent. You're informing the superintendent. I, that's what I'm in for. That's I'm informing the superintendent of intent to contact. I, I, and I mean, she doesn't need my approval to do so. I don't think as a board member, I don't think she needs my approval as long as I know she's going to get to go through Dr. Breggy. And there's a cap I, of hours so that you know someone doesn't take advantage of it. All I'm saying is that when possible, when I'm possible, okay with like, when possible, like informing yeah, the board. Yes, that, the board that, uh, the board. yes. So I'm like, it's not. Possible, thank you, thank you. Have the, at the uh, majority, majority of the board, consensus. and when not, yes. then to minimize your use of, of legal counsel and, and inform the superintendent. Inform the superintendent. Let's all of them. Yeah, but limit to it is subject to is subjective. Mm -hmm. So I think it's hours. I think it's I, good to spread all. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we should. Yours, you have you have scruples. There's someone who might not. This. I know, and then we'll revise our bylaws if necessary. <laughs> Thank, so thank you. Thank so you. Can we just can we, can we clear that? Okay, so it's going to be when possible for right. the majority okay. board and to inform the, the majority. Yes. Yeah. When possible. I think just are you suggesting that. any controls, Noah, on when the superintendent can speak to council? Um, no, don't we know. don't. We've, He's never you can't, allowed. You can't. It's really hard to do that. Trust me, the superintendent doesn't want to talk it's to council, <laughs> first of all. Um, no offense, I'm not right. suggesting that there should be. I'm just, I'm just asking. I couldn't hear clearly. Okay, thanks. So when is possible? Seek, seek, seek approval of the weekend. I would say when possible. We need to say with more consensus. Why you use more consensus? Is that all you need? That's majority. No, I don't think you're, you're always going to have consensus. I think you, you may need. That's to, why it's when possible. Maybe no, I'm still doing it. Listen to me. One, let me put something in here. With possible. <laughs> Get the approval of the board. Okay, the board is going to meet for two weeks. How are you going to get the approval of the that board? That? <laughs> I mean, we're not going to meet for two weeks. I know then you're going to violate Brown's uh, Brown Act by calling all of us to get approval. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when possible, meaning that if we're in a closed session and Mary or the pre or the president at the time says, "Board, I'm going to be calling this council about this issue." Okay, we're all together. That's then. when possible. Right. I guess so, what I'm talking about. It's not. I don't think it's the red bat phone. Right. Like, oh we my God, we got to call the attorney. And then we'll write it in. And we'll see <laughs> it so one more time. Sorry. When possible. <laughs> when possible. Humor me. When possible. Perform the board. Thank you. And this is. Okay. Okay. We're on board committees, I believe. Nine one three zero dash B. Board committees. I'm having this problem. Okay. Um, because we have yeah, different types of committees and we're calling them different names, okay. and that's what's throwing me for a loop. I'd like to have this one look back at, so we define a subcommittee <coughs> as opposed to a standing committee, as opposed to the way that they will operate and so on. For example, what kind of a committee? Is uh, it, when it's less than a quorum, or what kind of a committee uh, for the, if necessary for the uh, for who can appoint it, who will uh, be the one to actually uh, approve of it? It says, upon establishing a committee, the board shall clearly define the committee's purpose and timeline. Now, what committee is this? Because we have committees that are already there, and now we're calling them subcommittees. I think that this is a very uh, not clear bylaw. At this point, well, they're they're different. They've got standing committees. They've got they're, subcommittees. They've got where they do, but I think they do mix up the language of subcommittee and committee. Although they might be referring to the same thing. Well, that's what I need. Okay, to how about may I make a recommendation that what you're asking for is clarification on the committees, and not it's absolutely yeah, policy. Policy. So. I'm going to put a pin in this one and we'll address it 
Thank for you. clarification and I'll bring you it guys, to you. You guys can also, okay. what you can do is you can work together before this comes to the first reading and you can clarify. So, Sandy, just, just what are your questions? Sandy can do that. Yeah, I'm going to move it so you can identify who is the person who is the person who is the person who is the person who is the Okay, like Michelle, we'll clarify plan. that. We'll be back. Well, I just I wanted to bring that to your attention. I got it. That's all. Next, nine one four zero board representatives. Anyone? No, I'm sorry, I'm not there. Eli, this is your. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay, moving on. Nine one five zero. Eli. I have Come some. Uh, yes, I do. I do have some. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> As my father used to say, it's very messy. All um, right, bring it up. Um, I do not think that the board, our board, should be dictating the qualifications for a student board member. The high school should do that. We. All right. Kind of. Where? Yeah. The, the, we just uh, revised the constitution. So wait. That's right, but if we, if we stay out of that, uh -huh. then you guys can revise without us having to revise policy. Oh, okay. But I do like it must be one year. I think it's that's, uh, AFC, that's up to right? them. Okay. That well, shouldn't be up to us. I, I would like this to say though the one year of ASD experience. But, so that yeah, Mandy, what I'm saying is I like it too. What I'm it's, saying it's is, been done at the high joker. school level. <laughs> what do you have now? If they change in the what future, I'm saying is yeah, you, any year. given year, the high school can change the way they vote for a student board. So you can have a student board member with no experience? Yes, you could. No. You could. We, we, they we could. No, but with the ASB experience. experience, they should have. Well, no, the the ASB does. is now controlling that by having that in their policy. Right. And I'm saying we still should not dictate who they send to us and how. The, technically, by Ed Code, I believe that the board is allowed to dictate it, but that is I not how we have done it. And I think right. it is a good plan to allow it to remain at the high school level. Right. I, and I appreciate the, the double downing, I guess, like saying, okay, get this in line with what the high school qualifications are. But I think that if the high school qualifications are allowed to, to operate in their own, then it's okay. Uh, uh, for the record, Noah, so you know, that's why we did it. It was uh, Eli's recommendation, I think, that we that, uh, that we put that in. We didn't just come up with that on our own. Um, but I do I do agree with Noah actually that uh, to to leave that to the ASB for them to figure out what they want their qualifications uh, to be. I don't think the board should be dictating that. If, if we want to dictate anything, we should dictate that they have to go through some kind of training or something like that for them to then be on the board. But 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 I don't think we should set the qualifications other than they're, you know, one of our high school students. I agree with that. Does it have to be a senior? That's that's already in high school policy. Okay. I'm okay. And I'm fine. What do you want to do? Take out that green sentence. I'll take it out. Okay. Andy, you can take up the ASB. Yeah, they, 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 we didn't dictate it at the high school level. They dictated at the high school level. What if they say you don't have to be an ASB? Then, they can then we have to revise our policy. No, I no, think we can AS, take the right. I know children, and I trust me, we want to. Then, then, then the board is telling the ASB what to do. Then. Yeah, well, 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 I don't want to do qualify that. qualify you have that one year ASB. I don't want to do that. I think that okay, there are okay. some things that um, should be kept you know with some regulation and i think that that is a great calling card to prepare you well that is i think it's a, it's a, it's a recent this. addition let me say this yeah. it doesn't there there you are disqualifying potential wonderful candidates from from in the now asb isn't because they're requiring a one year yeah but but as a board member sitting here right one year on the asb uh -huh. is not necessarily a qualification for this job. Okay? Right. Okay. Better off taking a civics class than a year okay. on the ASB. Well, I agree with you on so, that. But so, then, but and what if, you're on, what if you're on the ASB? What if yeah. you do freshman and you do something with uh, just social events? Yeah. That qualifies you to be a student board right. member? No, it does not. It really does not. So that's why let the ASB pick their people. I don't want this line in the Bible. No, I, okay, I can agree with what you're saying. Yeah. You're right. Some would be disqualified if they weren't on ASB by virtue of grade point average or whatever ASB criteria. I can appreciate that. But I do think there should be some, just some review qualifier. process or, or qualifier or overview, just, you know, lightly that they need to be apprised of what those guidelines from their the high school are. 
Then we I should, think no. we'd have to defer well, to ASB to do that. I, I just I, I agree with with uh, Mr. Marco saying about how it would cause issues in terms of um, revising two sets of bylaws if there comes to a point where ASB changes their constitution or their um, election bylaws, or and then we the board then has to revise the board policy based on what they do or vice versa. Um, so to avoid that kind of conflict, I think if it's left to the, the ASB students on the provision of the constitution, it would make things well, what I, Well, what I would suggest is you just explicitly say that we're gonna give the ASB the right to decide what the qualifications are. Well, it That's says what I'm that. Saying, and I know that because I work with That's what Noah wants. <laughs> But right. it also it says voting student, rates are going to have to go. Student board member position shall be filled <laughs> by a vote of students enrolled at the high school in yeah. accordance with procedures. So I just I think you know you know that's what I'm saying. No, that I understand. Right. So, okay, so right. we should have, have some oversight. Of, um, Can I say something? Yeah, 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 whatever you yeah, 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 yeah. I I think it should be out, but I I won't fight it. This whole thing, according to my dear friend here and my student board member from his report that he made from the legislature, this whole thing may be moot and we will have to change it anyway. Yes. That's all I want to say. Okay. Uh, one other thing, Mary, the whole the whole section about the petition that's right in the middle of the first page, that's really inapplicable to our school district right now because we already, we already have a student board member. We don't, we don't need to do this. I would just suggest you put it at the, and behind elimination of the position. So in the event the position is ever eliminated, then you know we that would matter. It, we left it in because it's ed code and we left it in the place because it's the CSDA format. Um, just so that from a simplicity standpoint, I really feel strongly that we need to move it. We can. Yeah, I mean, just because CSBA does something doesn't mean they're 100% right. I think Dave is right. It should be the, the CSBA is the form, but for our school district, we've had a student board member for a decade. Therefore, we don't we don't need that front and center of our of our board policy. I would just put it in the back. I would leave it. I would just put it at the end. Okay. The end of that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, <laughs> We hope to eliminate a lot of this. Well, actually, with a I think we are. I think <laughs> Following the discussion of, of last night, I think it would make sense for um, one, two, three, the fourth paragraph to say a board member whose grandchild or child or child or grandchild is a uh, is attending a school the school district. Given that that may be a possibility in the future. Okay. I mean, it's a possibility now, but. Did you hear that, Rochelle? She's she's not answering. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Wait, I uh, for that. Second paragraph. I would like to strike it unless agreed to by the board as a whole. The first, the second paragraph, unless agreed to by the board as a whole. I don't think in any circumstances a board member should exercise any administrative responsibilities or command yeah, the service of a school employee. Yeah. I think that's a dangerous line mm -hmm. to walk on. I want to just absolutely eliminate. So you're saying it's like our, like our first, neighbors. Just give them the first thing. You're, you're starring it. You're starring it. Agreed. So first sentence. You want to delete it? Yeah. The first, the first part. part. We're going to delete. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to yeah. delete the phrase unless agreed to by the board as a whole. In the second paragraph. Individual yeah. 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 Deleting. Deleting. Just that. Just that. Yes. That's all. Yes. Uh, Anybody else? Nope. Are you sure? I mean, the only reason I think that you 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 may not want to do that, but I'm not going to argue about it, is like, look, we're we're all volunteers. Like, in the event that you have a board member who also happens to be employed by the school district in some of a respect, well, I guess you couldn't do that. That's why I'm no longer teaching. You have to renounce. It. Okay, to fine. Don't Okay, I'm good. All good. Okay, yeah. nine, 
a governing board election. I don't have any issue with that. Um, uh, oh, wait, is... I do. <laughs> oh, but it's only the same thing that I mentioned. That's exactly before. why we're here. It's only the same thing. <laughs> oh, what is it? About the city, it's just that within the city's school district, the way you've got to work. Which paragraph are you on? Uh, top of page, the second Something page. There. Third members may reside anywhere within oh, the yeah. district's boundaries, the city school's district boundaries. I think. Right, the proper boundary. Within the school district. Like in school district's attendance oh. boundaries, you mean? Whatever the, yeah. Whatever the language Whatever the right, whatever the, we said look it up with legal and make sure we yeah. have to legal. Okay. Um, I just had to ask um, a, board, a board man. <laughs> A board member, it's the um, un under campaign conduct, everybody. Second paragraph. Yes. A board member you. shall not expend, and if you're welcome, a candidate shall not accept any public money for the purpose of seeking. However, the district may establish a dedicated fund for those seeking election of the board. The, the re we couldn't take it out because it's government code. Okay. It is? But we would have taken yeah. it out. Okay. So we have that, was a, that was a discussion. Okay. Yeah, and then the other that. thing, um, in order to help protect the public's trust in the, the next paragraph. The electoral process, as well as the public's confidence in the board and district, the board encourages all candidates to sign in here for principles of code of fair. Is this also and required? Also. Because this is a county requirement. Actually, I don't, you can't run unless you do this. Right. So I, I don't know why that. it's Sorry. extra language. I don't know if that's a requirement to have an ours. Yeah. I think it's CSBA saying, hey, I just, you I, guys I, should do this. I'm not, I'm just bringing it up, everybody. I don't care if we take it out. I'm just saying you have to do this to run no matter what, right. no matter what. So, so that's yeah. what you can it just, do you need to have it out? No, we could. I'm just, just yeah, I just didn't know if that was something we were all. All right, okay. moving on. We are at 9222B, resignation. I would just like to make a comment that the yeah. president, you. meaning okay. myself, never was notified of a resignation. Well, that's that's no good. It wasn't in there before. That's something we added. We added that because it wasn't. It used to be just four. Okay. Whole. All right. Well, that's why I'm saying I was never notified, and that's why it's good that it's. There. Um. If what happens if the board president is on? She sent the note to herself. Send the note. Well, she takes the note. I'm just. Do we have to have language for that? Then the clerk takes over. No, 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 no. As far as, as, far as, as, far as note, I'm trying to move this along. So as far as notification, just to the county superintendent or to the superintendent, our superintendent and county superintendent, who would the board president notify? You board. have to notify. Okay. We <laughs> added the board secretary, which is the superintendent. Mm -hmm. The superintendent notifies the, the county. The, county. the resigning but board member shall also notify they the have board, to notify the board president. Right? That's yes. in here. Well, then, so I'm just saying if it's the board president, uh -huh. you just give a copy of the written resignation to the board secretary, and that's it. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay moving moving on. on. Oh, um, Nine, 9223B, filling, filling vacancies. Um, those of you on the committee, number five. Um, I, I wrote, uh, does not apply to us. Um, it's government code, it has to stay. Okay. That's, yeah. that's the issue. Yeah. And, and then, then provisional appointments. That, we, we what number that are you? Line. Which one? So the revision on the second page under provisional appointments. I think we amended it in our final meeting. So it's not this it's one. It's not that one. We, we made that's it. That's what I had question. We made it. It sounds weird, right? Yeah, we, it it, we 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 fixed it. So what is it? it what work. is it supposed to be now? Which one are we at? The, the original. Yep. When authorized, are you talking about that one? Oh, because we we fixed it in the previous one, right? Where it says. We're, to, we're saying, for example, or this is a, we, we changed it in the other one where we got rid because it's like in a manner of announcing that one didn't make sense. I, yeah, I just changed it. We don't need it. What stuff. they were trying to say is what was the stuff we deleted? Because it's not just announcing it in like the paper, we put it in like Aries and stuff like that. Blah, blah, blah. So that was I think I think we wanted, it? didn't we change it to the board will also provide notice that community through all of this the communication. Yeah. Okay. So we did in a manner of announcing and right. replaced it with Fine. Through. Thank you. Are you going to do it on the second yes. part too? Okay. Thank you. That's fine. That's all I have. Got it. And it's in there twice, Doctor. Right? Yeah. There it is at the back. Yeah. Great. 
See what you missed on the committee? All right. It was not we would never have gotten done if we did Can I ask one question on the next one? Yes, you 924B. Go ahead. Uh, out of curiosity, who are the persons authorized in Education Code 60, other than the people that are uh, listed there? Because there was a course we asked once. Uh, the rabbi and people like that. That was, I was wondering, is there people in that code oh. that change or that can be used? And remember the discussion we had. I do. No, I, I know exactly what mm -hmm. you'd like me to read the full yes. list of people. Yes, yes that would be fine. Thank you. The Superintendent of Public Instruction, Deputy and Assistant Superintendent of Public Instruction, Secretary of the Superintendent of Public Instruction, Members of the Board of Governors of the California Community Colleges, Chancellor of the California Community Colleges, County Superintendent of School, Intendants of Schools, School Trustees, Members of Boards of Education, Secretaries and Assistant Secretaries of Boards of Education, City Superintendents of Schools, District Superintendents of Schools, Assistant Superintendents of Schools, Deputy superintendents of schools, the principals of schools, and every other officer charged with the performance of duties under the provisions of this code may administer and certify oaths relating to officers or official matters concerning public schools. So, in other words, when we had our my husband did it and all those other things, yeah, the, yeah. they were not. Mm -hmm. It has to be like a school official, right? Okay. Or, we, or, or no, it started from like some ceremonial when it was more of a ceremonial, uh, you know. Nomination and I'm legit. So, you're legit. I'm legit. Michelle, you're gonna have to do it over. <laughs> I have to do it over. Yeah, yeah. I, just, yeah. I guess I shouldn't even be sitting here. Bye. <laughs> oh, you I brought it up. I guess oath of office for <laughs> yeah. raise your hand, please. Oath of okay. office for, for bringing in. The, at the organizational meeting for vice president and president, I guess, can be done by anyone, but right. the initial right. oath of office when you assume your seat on the board I'd has to be one of these two. Right. Yeah. Or, or a school person. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, any other office. Any other comments? No. Okay, thanks for bringing that up. Next is 9330 the orientation. I have nothing on nothing. that. Okay, moving on. 9240 board training. Second uh, paragraph, it lists um, the orientation, board roles, policies, procedures, district vision. It doesn't say strategic plan. Mm -hmm. It should be in there. Where are you reading them? Which Second one? paragraph, like the list of what shall is provided in the orientation. Uh, it should say strategic plan. It should say strategic yeah. plan. Yeah. Yeah. We added it in everything. Yeah. Else. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Got it. Next one. Yeah. Compensation. So I just had a question, Mark. Is this CSBA? Is this required language? Um, do you want one option? Uh, you could have done one, or you could have done two. Option Four, one, three. the max is two forty. We went with two and put in two forty. Um, okay. When I first saw this, I uh, I am opposed to monthly compensation of two hundred forty dollars a month. But I, if everybody's in agreement with it, I will take it and I will allow them to take the money and keep it or turn it over to a scholarship. Well, it says may receive. So yeah. we have what I'm saying, but I, I am opposed to this one. Right, so am I. And, but we don't even have to take it. We don't have to take it. No, it's not required. We don't have it's to just take it, opposite. but that's not the point. Right. If one person is taking it and, and it's something that you, you get that can create, a, you know, I'm not saying it will. I don't care what others, what people do, but I personally, think that we should be consistent upon it and so, either do or we don't. So let me ask this question. Doesn't the board have to actually vote to take this? You have you to vote? change your policy. Uh, policy. Yeah. So we just policy. so once we vote on the policy, board members can ask for this money. You may take yeah. it or may not. Yeah. It, it may be a matter of may 
they, they can say they draw on it. Lunches I, and eat brisket sandwiches. I, I don't <laughs> I don't want it in here. I think it's a good idea to have it in there because um, although it isn't a large sum of money, it may open up the ability for more people to be interested in the office yeah, and try some money. I think close to the amount of money, I mean, that people to the time that that's, we spend doing true, this. But in like, terms of like, you know, something I know. If, if somebody out there has said, well, I wasn't going to run, but now I'm going to make 240 a month, I'm going to run. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> So I don't think I, it's about that. I think it's about respect. respect to the position. Yeah. It's about respect. It's about respect. This number is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you you gotta, this, 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 that's the most that you know for the comment. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so, uh, do you have any comments? I need to give the board a little I do. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Marcus. I do. Uh, I'm in I'm in favor of it. Look, I mean, Noah, you're right. This is this is a small fraction. Even if if minimum wage is 15 bucks an hour, I think, and we're spending roughly eight hours per meeting, that comes out to around 240. So that's expect, that's just at an absolute minimum, the time that we're spending in our meeting. So this is not about fair compensation. This is recognizing that this is not a run of the mill kind of volunteer position that should be taken lightly. There is an element of real seriousness uh, but to this role, and I don't think it, I don't look at it as compensation as much as, you know, being able to cover some of the expenses that come uh, with, and, and like, I don't mean expenses in the professional term. I mean, just like, just stuff like working late and just ordering some food for yourself or something like that. It, you know, it, it, it helps offset for, you know, certain kinds of people living a certain lifestyle. I think this role has tended to um, you know, lean towards a lot of kind of volunteers. And I would love to see more business professionals running for this position, uh, you know, running for these roles. And uh, I think this sends a signal that this is serious, you're being compensated, and you're expected to really put in the time. I agree. I agree. Well, you're also I don't know exposing you yourself. Don't. I take it very seriously. And I, it was not because of any monetary thing. So I, of course not. Street and true and the favorite, I yeah. will still vote no and I will not take the money. So that's just putting that James out Wade has something to say. Just to, James some Wade. additional information for the board. Uh, this would be a monthly stipend, but it's based on your attendance on your in your scheduled board meeting. So for example, if there was a month where you did not attend, you would not receive that stipend, or if you attended one board meeting and didn't make it up to a subsequent meeting, you would not receive the stipend. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's also, I don't know if there's compensation in the, the next policy related to health and welfare benefits, but that's also available to board members. Right. Is this tax? But not free of it's charge. Money. You don't get health it's and welfare right benefits. I, don't we, did not include, wait, we did not include that other okay. than if you would Welcome pay for that. Welcome to coaching. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so on is this, this issue. Thank you, James Wade. No. Okay. I would like <laughs> to be with this thing. item. So I, I'd like to go around. What I'm hearing is that the vote is 3 2. Yeah. And so I would like to then proceed with this item. Yeah. Okay. I didn't get the secretary's name, but I got this. Uh, but, but there's Did more here, and you just brought this up. Uh, this, the oh, thanks. Board thanks, members who elect a car participant shall pay the full cost of the premiums. I mean, we don't, you can participate in it, but it doesn't come up with it. Oh, we yeah. are on item 92. Uh, for option yeah. two. Yes. It was the best of the options. So you're oh, about this is about health and welfare. Yeah. You're talking about the medicine. This is this yeah. has always been in our our core policy. And, and, and option two was the best of the three right. options. Right. This was existing in the core policy. We don't change it. Because the other two incurred more costs than the right. I'm not interested in it at all. So you don't <laughs> <get it. laughs> I'm having a hard time understanding part of this. So does this mean that any uh, Okay, so Demary, you just said that this has always been part of our policies, right? So any former board member can come and uh, you know want to get their benefits paid through, uh, get their medical, their health and welfare benefits through the district. Is that what it's saying? Or they have to pay for it. You have to pay for it. But it, but it's always been... well. You pay the premium. You pay the premium, correct? Okay. Pay. Like what's provided, like by district employees. Yeah, you're not the, the district isn't paying your portion, like a district employee. If you're currently as board members, 
you could elect to join our health plan, but you would pay your monthly premium. There would be no district contribution. Thank there you. are provisions in the no code. district contribution. Okay, right. got it. Where the district would pay your premium. We're not taking that. We're not taking that. Yeah. Yeah. We, we we're not taking that. Okay. How, how much are those premiums? They're very They're high. Yeah. <laughs> 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 There's really no benefit. Yeah. There's a lot more on there. Okay. The next item is nine two six zero legal protection. All right. I have got Mandy. Um, okay. So in the event of a frivolous lawsuit, because they're out there, I mean, it's, it's really. I would like to know that there is some sort of expanded uh, protection or coverage. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is, like okay, an umbrella policy. You know, I already got that at your suggestion, but. Um, I guess what I'm saying is, okay, it says, look, we're protected as board members as long as we don't do something reckless and we don't um, we, we don't violate the laws. I, I'm aware of all that, but is there some rider or some coverage that includes frivolous lawsuits? So what was her name? Um, Dino. Well, what's that? Okay, yeah, what's her name? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so infuriating. So infuriating. I almost oh, Jane, Jane, Jane Smith. Smith. Jane Smith, yes. Jane Doe, almost separated from this. I can't lie. So, um, is there any protection in the event of a frivolous lawsuit that is going to have to? I'm going to defend myself, or I'm going to? Is there is there coverage for uh, for my defense? Yeah, through Keenan, through our uh, through our JPA, you're covered as board members acting in your capacity as board members. Yeah, um, and I can bring that language to the board just so you can see it and have it. And it's very liberal because it's, you know, everything we do is within the capacity of what our role is. So. Right, but if someone's bringing a lawsuit because we're enforcing a, 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 a state mandate. You're, but, you're but that's covered. within you're the covered. capacity, yes. You're just yes. trying to think of what, what other frivolity. Including no, your I, deductibles, I, including. Yeah, your, everything, your legal it's representation. Like 50,000 per person, which. No, 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 no. It's more than that. It's more than that. What was that fifty thousand? That was related to I think uh, you being found guilty of infringing on someone's civil rights. It's, it was very, it was, it was different. But I'll get that information for all the board. Okay. I just want to ask you, as board members, because no one wants to lose the farm here. Is this? Do we feel that this is an adequate um, yeah, it's, it's, description? I've always, that... I've, I've been part of suits in the past, and I've always felt protected. Okay, that's good to know. And I literally have a problem. I know. Good to know. Okay, may I just ask one more thing? Yes. Would we be, um, would there be some discretion or some uh, permissiveness for us if we had to, um, at a limited cost or no cost, whatever, speak to Jabari, should we have to about these matters? As, like, as a board, can we? Are we able to right. utilize his um, expertise given um, you know that something comes up that we are all in a lawsuit? Well, you wouldn't use Jabari, you would use the lawyers through Keenan, but there would be a set of lawyers you could use without any cost. Right. So right. Be sure, I mean, go through me. Yeah, go through me. <laughs> <laughs> all in first. Okay. Or, or board approval. So there would be ample um, access to the yes. insurance yes. area. And, and we've done that before in the past. Yeah. So um, you know that that's something that sometimes just for FYI purposes, um, you know, and, and we're covered in, in some conversations about that in closed sessions. And most of the time, when board members are named in suits, as the process goes, they're dropped. Right. right. Oh, okay. It's, it's it's All right. Thank you. That's it. You have any questions on this? Nope. Okay. Nine. Thank you. Just one thing I wanted to call out here. It's not even a question or a change, but we've had some a discussion in the past about conflicts of interest and what are conflicts of interest. So I just want to call out the second sentence. It's not just financial conflicts of interest, right? It goes beyond that. So it's stuff that, you know, may be a benefit to a family member. Um, it, it, it goes beyond just things that financially benefit you. Um, so I, I, I really just, just, just wanted to call that out. The conflicts of interest can be all kinds of, uh, all kinds of things. 
And this is one thing, if I could just add, um, when I was speaking to Jabari, that um, he said that this part was removed and it was just the exhibit that was still in existence for the con conflict of interest. So right, we sent this to Jabari. To yeah, have... so let me, so I'm gonna, I'll follow up on that. All right, we're gonna put a pin in this one then? Yeah, because what Jabari is saying that this is no longer in existence. Well, then perhaps I stand corrected. Well, it's 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 what is currently available on the district website. As you all know, you are going through an update in terms of the the system for how board policies are are accessed. So the only thing that is currently showing as relates to conflict of interest is nine two seven zero dash e, and it also says PDF one. So it's just the exhibit, not the actual policy. Obviously. You have not eliminated this particular bylaw. It's just not currently up as you all are going through your updates. All right. Right. But it is in the CSBA, though. Right. Yes. Jabari. Jabari. Is it correct. Stated? Correct. And, and, and I don't think it was your intent for it to be uh, eliminated. It's just what is currently available on the website. Right. Right. right, and we have several and of those. Have but, yeah, because they have, everything is government. Right. Nine three one zero B. Board policies. Nine three one zero B. Nine three one zero. Board policies. Board policies. Yes, we're right using now. the CSBA version all the way without yeah. any revisions. Yeah. I didn't have a problem with this one. Okay. Abe, do you have anything to this? No, I mean, the only thing I wanted to call out, I know we talked about having a section for the superintendent or whatever. Like, I do want to call out that the first sentence here does say uh, uh, clarify roles and responsibilities of the board and the superintendent. Um, and also, just in thinking about it, we're appointing as an officer of the board, we're appointing the superintendent. Again, I think it begs the question for us to spell out as part of our board bylaws, again, the roles and responsibilities of the superintendent. So just, just putting a pin in that. Okay, I'm, I'm putting a sticky pin. Sticky pin. He's just recognizing that this reference is- Oh, I see, okay. Okay, we'll come back to it. Um, nine three two zero meetings and um, my only issue was cementing the John Cherney Retro Hall as a location. I just want to have the flexibility to say if we need to change the location, sometimes we have to move it to the SDC. You know. I agree with you on that. Yeah, so just, just something to be affected. Okay, where are you? Here uh, yeah. in the green. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the second and fourth, to the, uh, at the designated, at the, at a designate, or designated something. Yeah. It always has to be notified in the way the agenda so it, uh, well, just from the, the district designated yeah. address yeah sure i also don't like the last sentence meetings will strive to end by 9 p.m with a majority vote to extend the meeting are we saying that we're striving to do it but we have to have a majority vote to go past it um i think i think i think we should put a little uh have a little bit more clarity there what do you want it to? No, I, I actually. What, time is it? what, what we <laughs> agree yeah. was. Seven ten. We strive to end the meeting by nine, and at eight thirty, we would take the temperature on where we were on the agenda. And, yep. and if we weren't going to be decisions. finished at nine, we would take a majority vote. Totally. If we when, wanted to continue on or continue those items to another meeting. When when we had meetings starting at seven o'clock, there were times when they went past midnight. We can't have a meeting go past midnight. Oh, I know. Right, so we would have to um, take a vote exactly like this is saying. So this is it's a it's a good thing to have a good control to have. That's good. No, I I I I don't I like the I like the intent of it. I just would like uh, clarity around whether it necessarily means you have to have a vote to continue, or if you don't say anything, like it, does the meeting become invalid after nine o'clock because you haven't had a vote to continue? But like we should just have clarity around that. That's all I'm saying. So I think the way to do it, I think, is we'll strive to finish by nine o'clock. 
if it's going to go past nine, anyone on the board can say, hey, we're going past nine o'clock. Let's take a vote if we're going to continue. But if no one says anything, I don't think the intent here is that the meeting ends sure. at nine o'clock if you don't have a vote. Gabe, we could say that meetings will strive to end by 9 p.m., period. However, with the majority vote of the board, the meeting can be extended. I like that. Yeah. I also add, not add, but suggest um, start time of meetings. Um, is there are instances where for some reason board members can't get board members can't get to the meeting on time? Do we hold meetings for everybody? Do we start no matter what? Do we start on time? If there's a quorum, if there's a quorum, do we start? We should we should know that or not, and it would be helpful if it's by law as opposed to just conjecture. Should there be a, a five minute grace period of some kind? The meeting starts at three oh five. Yeah, unless otherwise, you know, notified like like if somebody's stuck in traffic and somebody's car didn't work for whatever reason that you then can delay the meeting. But otherwise we want to show that we're efficient. We want, and plus, we expect our students to be a class on time. We expect our teachers to be at work on time. We should do our job on time. That's that's my feeling. Well, Understood. Grace period. School. Are you I like the grace period. It's eight, not eight o'clock. Yes. I, I think it's fifteen minutes. Yes. <laughs> is that how far Starbucks is? Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I think the tricky part out of that, Noah, is that sometimes we're walking out a closed session, and so. It might be 530 by the time we get over to the John Cherney Hall, and then you might have a quorum at 530, but there may be a couple of people that haven't gone there yet. Can you technically start the meeting? Like, I think God, that's the question for me. The, the issue is when we post a meeting at five o'clock for the public, you know, that's our problem now. It's not their problem. And yet we continually make public wait. And I don't like doing that. If we're running here, we need to be at a closed session 10 to 15 minutes before five o'clock. Yes. We don't need to be making food runs before a five o'clock meeting. We should do that before we come into closed. Um, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't like how disorganized we are starting our meetings. It's sloppy and it's inconsistent. I have to agree with you 100%. Dr. Brady knows that I used to get very nervous in the closed meetings or the two o'clock meetings that I wanted them to end before five because I do not feel it's fair to the public to keep them waiting more than five minutes at the most uh, because of sometimes it's gone 45 minutes, it's gone a half an hour. And I got to tell you, it's not fair to the public. And if we feel that a meeting is going to take more time, we need to start our closed meeting. Earlier. Right. And to add to that, we have a lot of kids that come to our open meetings now. Right. And it is not fair to make them sit. That's a waste of their time. They could be home doing whatever. They have nine million better things to do than sit there. So I just think so, we need to be in starting. So I'm on the same page as you, Noah. I think it's I think it's two different issues, right? So one is like we should actually start to strive at the time that we say we're gonna start, and that I totally agree with. But I was just talking about your point about whether you start the meeting when people aren't there. I was just noting that there are times that like we don't have a clear start time because of closed session. So it'd be hard to kind of draft something for that. Well, what I'm, what I'm saying is that oh, as, and maybe it's not policy, it's practice that we make sure that we are out of close with enough time to start on time. What if we haven't finished the, the business? Of the you close? continue close yeah. until after open, which is what we used to do. After the five o'clock meeting, the open session, you go back and close. Oh, there are times that we've had yes. now we've been i think we've been managing clothes i actually have to say we've been managing clothes very well we've been we've been getting we, we do we've been getting over there we've been getting over there but then what happens is we drift in slowly came down is it ready to go we're going back and forth with that we, if we just show a little more initiative and say we're going to start a meeting at five o'clock and let's just look you know, I don't, what do you want like i said we want to be policy. We could say we will strive to start our meetings at five o'clock, just like you're going to strive to end them at nine. We're going to strive. I just think there should be something proactive in the language saying we take the start time seriously as a board. I like that. Okay. Where are we putting that? So um, regular meetings shall be held as, as close to five o'clock at, at five o'clock. Um, 
Where are you? You know, and then the same green day. Right under just, regular right? meeting. Okay. So something okay. there to just kind of oh, push okay. to five o'clock. So regular meeting shall be held at five o'clock. Like I don't want to say on a dot, but it's um, fine, fine. And then we as a board can manage that. What happened to your break? Two minutes. Two minutes? I, I just think we should start the meeting on time. Yes. Okay. 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 Well, okay. I actually sorry. Sorry. Um, you know, regarding the start time of five, which I know we have to do that, but there is a, there is some um, physical issues where some people need to get food or go to the bathroom or whatever. So that's why we add fifteen minutes. Okay, we have to, but even that's a turtle. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll say well, this I mean, is the there, if, if everybody's not ready, wait until everyone's ready. Well, I, that's a little... I mean, this is the first district I've been yeah. in where we haven't and, had some, exactly. some, like, real food. I know. Uh, is there any way we, to have We real used food? to. What it happened? It takes on that 240. And, but then, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. We stopped. So, it was the superintendent who did that. Well, no one ever ate it because what? you were so busy. You didn't eat during clothes. Oh, I'll eat. And then <laughs> it was and that's the time to eat is during clothes. When you're not on camera. When you're not on camera. Uh, and that's why, because we started closing. Right I suggest now we're that we, we're not putting yeah. out of the policy that we, we sit we <laughs> the eating time. Part after. Is this providing direction to the secretary? Right now. I am. I just want yes, yeah. to. The secretary of the board has posted. I'm going to keep us focused on the policy Good. and then we can come back to the Almost plan. done. Yeah. Let's come okay. back to that. Sometimes Nine. it's hard to go from okay. like 2 o'clock. Yeah. 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 I know. Really is. Yeah. Yeah. But let's come back to that. 9321 B. Closed session. Thank you. 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 Anything? No, the only the only question I had on this is just when we talk about joint powers, age, like we're not talking about the JPA we have with the city, right? They're on this is like the fourth page, I think, but the fifth page of this, the joint powers agency. That's not our JPA. That's a different JPA. I'm just yeah, that's the insurance. Sure. That's okay, clean. yeah, um, that's what I thought. No, I'm good. Uh, I want to just to clarify one thing and nothing. It says after the closed session, the board shall reconvene in open session before adjourning the meeting. Um, I'm wondering what you mean by that. Total meeting? Well, only because I know that we close our closed session meetings and we we don't go back into open session at that point. So I'm not sure. Uh, are we talking about then going into the evening sir, evening meeting? That's, okay, this is not very clear right there. That's the only thing. Where, where are you? I'm on no, the, the, the fourth paragraph. Fair. After the closed session, the board shall reconvene in open session before yeah. adjourning the meeting. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's exactly right. That's what we do. Yep. Open, we never adjourn closed, open. We move to open. We don't adjourn. I never, I mean, we we, we open, open. We, we move, we go into close, we come back into open and then we adjourn. Oh, I mean, I would think to make that more definite because I don't think that because that's... our agendas are always start with an open before yeah. you go into close. Yeah. So, well, so yes, I know, but I'm talking about at the end. I, I've sort of not seen that too consistently. No, we, and then we adjourn right. at the very end. Well, you did it very well for a year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think when you read it this way, it reads it reads it, different. It, it reads yes, it very it's, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm not trying that I know that may be the case, but it's reading is not clear. It doesn't read when you read it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. That, that, all right, so let me just put a pin on that one and we'll address that language and see if we can make us know. Hey mistake. colleagues, I uh I apologize. I have a I have a hard stop in nine minutes because all my favors that I've asked for nannies and everyone expire in nine minutes, and so I'm gonna have to go. Stipulation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna stop for one thing. Is there anything that that you absolutely want to like discuss? No, I I I actually my comments on the rest of it are very very light. Uh, so I will let you know in the next minute if there's anything really big to throw out, but I don't think so. Are your comments? Can you can incorporate them into the next draft. Is there not things that need to be? Right, you can pick it up the first reading too. Right. Yep. Thank you, guys. All right, then we'll move on to the next one. 
9322B. Yep, yes. Staff um, okay with 120 hours. All right, so am I, but I just want to point out that uh, one thing I was that the vision and goal, the vision, the district's vision and goal should be, and I think that that's what Mary is trying to do now is to make sure that we read that at the beginning of every meeting. Yes, yes. And I have no other comments other than that. Um, I appreciate that Mary's doing that. I don't know if it should be a bylaw. I think it should be up to the president. Time. Well, it just uh, it, it says it shall reflect the district. It just says that the board meeting agenda shall reflect the district. Yeah, I, I, I like that. That's fine. And we do that now. I just meant the reading of it. Well, then it should be listed at the front of the thing, maybe listed on each one. It is. Yeah, well, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. And staff, you're okay with 120 hours? What are you talking about? Well, we don't love 120 hours. <laughs> what are you, I'm, I'm, what are you, I'm, I'm trying to find. For, it's like it's the colored stuff. 9322. I'm looking at nine three two. Yeah, it's it's changing it's, from it's seventy-two like to one hundred twenty hours because it's it's staff preparation. We're getting the agenda out down. on Thursday instead of Friday. Right. Oh, okay. To the board. So we so had a little more time to reflect on it, so we right. don't have to use our whole weekend. Gabe, are you okay with one hundred and twenty hours? Oh, we're all getting the agenda. I, I, I was just thinking my own look I, I would like to get it 120 hours in advance I don't know if we want to make it a absolute requirement for our bylaws that it has to be by that time but I would like that to be the, again the practice versus what we actually put in writing I would like to see it that far in advance if we could well, the, other, the other concession given later is that the board members are striving to give the pre-meeting questions further in advance That's as true. well that's fair. I would love well, to that's see that. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We yeah. get the questions, yeah. Ellie. Yeah. We're yeah. 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 supposed to be are, are now 30 hours in yeah. 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 I think my it's a Yeah. I mean, I always do it by Sunday. And the, the other ones, um, it's also, it, it's a, it, but lower down the page. Um, for the agenda dissemination to members of the public, is at least 72 hours prior, preferably 120 yeah. hours. Yeah. Yeah. But it's mandated to 72. Yeah. So. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Meeting conduct. Uh, Mary, um, but, um, but I didn't have anything else, but just a quick question. With, with the governance handbook that you distributed, I know we're, are we going through the same kind of reading of that up at tonight? Am I going to be missing that? Uh, I would like to have, maybe step that we make this a different study session for the governance handbook. So, is this going to okay? Be great. Michael, I would no. Uh, I would appreciate that. Thank you. All um, right, guys. I'm sorry I have to to take off a few minutes early, but uh, thank you guys all. I have, we are getting our agenda earlier, according to what Eli said, to give staff more time to answer questions. It should always change the 30 hours to 48 hours. So by Sunday night. Or earliest Monday morning, right? Well, right now we have it in the governance handbook for Monday morning at like nine or nine, nine thirty. Is that okay? But I, I will say it, it, it's tough when we get them on Monday because we're already in cabinet, and so and we we designate, believe it or not, hours to right. Do yeah. Questions. Well, if there's an issue with this, the idea was to not get it on Friday night and have to spend your weekend doing the agenda. Right. When you plan. You're like sitting at dinner on Friday night. You've already made your plans and you get an agenda on Friday Jeez. night at dinner and there goes your weekend. And so I think as a board, I just feel like it's really disrespectful. Like you just don't know what you need to hear. You know, setting the agenda, I know is when you but when you're not no. setting the agenda, you just get slammed. And so and then you have questions that have to be in on Sunday morning. So inevitably if you have plans on the weekend, you shut Sunday night, like you have to get your questions in. So the idea about moving the agenda up earlier so that you can get it on Thursday, then you have time, you can do it on Thursday or Friday, you can get it in. So if we which I agree with if we make the questions due on Friday, then that gives it to you guys on the weekend. Well, I don't know if they're going to tackle work on the weekends. That's why I just I mean, said Sunday night. Right. If you have through Sunday night, it gives it, you. That's you, why I left it on Monday because I don't want you having. Right, but he's saying day. that Monday morning sometimes is already too late. Right. So we saw you. compiling questions. Mm -hmm. Dr. Reggie starts compiling questions Sunday, Sunday evening. Yeah. Uh, we get them Sunday late Sunday, um, and we are hoping that they're all in. 
and then by the deadline at 9 a.m., we're already in cabinet. So often we'll start working before we get to cabinet, which starts at 8.30. So why don't we um, try to have questions in by Friday? If we get that in the dinner, if we start that Friday, Friday, Friday. Sunday, it could be Sunday, it could be 4, 5 p.m. on Sunday, 40 yeah. hour. All right. But here, let's do it. by Sunday, but try and get them in as early as you can. Like, yeah. don't wait till Sunday. So if you get it on Thursday and you have your questions, get them in Friday. Don't wait till Sunday. Questions from board members should be submitted at the latest by 5 p.m. the Sunday before each board meeting, or 48 hours. 48 hours. Yeah. Just change time like to 48. Yeah. That's it. Do we limit the number? No. <laughs> Is that pushing it? One first? No, you can limit this one. Yeah. Why can you limit the number of answers? You know, you, you start your questions and you go through it and you you get a couple questions and then you go through it or you, or you stop because you get tired or whatever. But you get time to, to put them out. And I think it's reasonable to get them by 5 o'clock yeah. or early Sunday night. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That'd be helpful. Great. That was the second page of. So it's yeah. at least 48 yes. hours? Yeah. Okay, great. We two, are three. on. 9323B. Um, the only thing I had, and I do appreciate the first sentence as begin on time. So that's another. Uh, Wait, you're on nine? Nine, nine, three, two, three, 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 three. Uh, um, B is that second page number six, folks. Second page number um, one. We this is about pub speakers, right? Participation in speakers. What are you talking about, Noah? Um, number six. The board president may rule on appropriateness of the topic subject to the conditions. Um, I just think we need to do, and this is ongoing this is not anybody this includes myself who has done the job but as a board where we, i don't think we have tight rein on public speaking that was one of the things discussed a lot is that going forward in the form for submitting public comment that the item being discussed in the comment like be selected uh -huh. which that would allow us to limit comment time because it's i think it's limited to like 20 minutes per item right so if we allow if we are able to see what item people are speaking on beforehand then it can be determined and we used to when everything was in person uh -huh. Thomas Pam would collect them sort them into topic and give them to the board president mm -hmm. or vice president to, to manage but we never never but we never limited no we didn't limit, and sometimes speaking time was limited but i'm Did not sure speak overall, to it then? When, I mean, it kept you never spent the time. No, no, we, we, well, we never, it's once in a while you would get the hot topics that would expand Bad and go thing. into an hour and a half public comment. Right. Um, it wasn't, it seems to have been happening more and more lately. That's why I'm bringing it up and we have to I just have tighter controls on it. Can I say something else? Yeah. I would like to talk about another topic. And that is the, the way we do things and whether it would be according to what this says here changes a little bit of it. And I'm looking at the bottom of the first page. Uh, in our board meetings, we give a person a chance at open comment to make comments on anything they want to make comment on, right. uh, if you recall. That's but right. the next sentence says, at a time so des designated on the agenda at a regular meeting, Members of the public may bring before the board matters that are not listed on the agenda. The board shall take no action or discussion on any item not. But it also says that a person can make or come before the board at the time that that discussion or that well, item is up. Yeah. If, if the board decides that's so late. Well, yeah, some, I mean, some look, right it. now it's in here. And yeah. Now, is that a decision that we will make before and have it consistent, or are we going to? Decide at that time. This That's one, all. And this one has to be in here because it's Ed Code and Government Code. Right. But we can decide meeting for meeting based on how the agenda is put together. Right. Some, some okay, may. I just want to. Typically, we are spending them in all of them. Yeah, yes. yes. This That's, is your and, opportunity. And sometimes people will specify, I would like to speak when the item comes up to vote, and we grant it out of the right. Okay, so. all right. I just want to point that out that, that there. Okay. Yeah. 
What I found interesting is that without taking action, board members or district staff may respond to statements yes. made for questions because we don't as a practice. We don't do that as a practice. I think it's always safer not to. I agree. You can probably do it if you want later on in your comments, That's let right. the board comments if you wish to do so. It's confusing to the public. Uh, if we, yeah, just, we start to get into that practice, right. get into the weeds, the people not... want it. Want to hear from each of those meetings, but like different members of the public. Uh, uh, just a comment for the board, just President Wells, and members of the board. Yes. Uh, in my what thirty-one years of doing this, the the, the 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 format that I've seen work the best is that uh, the public is allowed to speak at the time of each item. And then at the end of the meeting, you do general. the public can do the general comments. That's what I supposed to do. Well, that'll weed a lot of people out. Yeah. That is yeah. what I've seen at work 30. the best. Yeah. <laughs> because then the board hears from the public right immediately before, the before board discussion about the item. Mm -hmm. And then at, and then the people oh, that are really serious. So you're saying they can so speak an open comment to that. start. There's no open comment. No, oh, the open, the open, the open comment, comment is at the end. And then and then board comments, which are kind of general follow too, come to follow at the end. Right. Well. That in my in my experience, that that design has worked the best. That's that's. I think we should try it. We could try it. See how it works. I think one of the things I would say is that a lot of the comments we get during phases of what we're handling. Are not on agendized items, right? So you're just like so, so, and you all. But agree that. on the yeah. when they pull the form out, we ask it which agendized item they're speaking. We just say it's subject, a topic, but yeah. we could we could yeah. change it. To yeah, ask them which item. Which specific? Yeah. And then that's when they'll speak. But the boy, if we decide to do that, we need to let the public know that this yeah. is going to be a new policy, or we're going to try it, or whatever. We'll put it on the. Thing when they fill out their comments, yeah, it's, it's it online or like if, if your item is not an agendized item, you will be speaking at the end. You'll be speaking at you know at the end of the meeting for after the comments. after the board business. Right. After, we we can. I work just, the we'll work on the language, but okay. I do think it's I, it was recommended that way when I went to the CSBA mm -hmm. as well, and I brought it up. I remember that. Um, I think we should try it. I, it, I, 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 I like it because I think it's more focused. Plus, we get down to business earlier. Right. That's yeah. what I like about it, too. All right. Let's move along. I have nothing else. Okay. okay. Actions by the board. I don't have anything. Uh, minutes and recordings. I don't have anything. Wait. Does anybody else have anything on 9323 um, actions by the board? Besides right. Okay, I just want to. 9324 meetings and recording. Anybody have any questions? No. Not ours. No? Okay, the last item. We didn't this one. Yeah, this, 9, no, they're working, we're still working on that glitch. And we so. can talk about that when we do the board. Okay. I have a question on this one. Do you want a signature line on your minutes? You want oh good question because you have it in yeah. there, right? Yes, because it's upon the board the minutes shall yes. be signed by the board secretary. We need to put it signed by any whatever you want. Okay. If you, you don't generally do that, they're <laughs> board approved. Yeah. 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 I tried the signature one one year, but it didn't really work. But well, if not, we should take it out. Right? Yeah, we should take it. We don't. Lost another last one you need. So if you want to take that out, yeah. Was that CSBA? The CSBA, yeah. I would take it out. Which one is that under? Yeah. Last one. I mean, the board approves the minutes anyway. So right. Yeah. What does the last one say? No, that, that way I can say I have no idea. <laughs> having the having the board secretary sign off. Upon on approval by the board, the minutes shall be signed. <laughs> Always the you know, I tried it one year and I put some lines on, but then I had to chase everybody around to go find them. So I remember that. I never. So they should be signed by the secretary. So we're saying it's not really necessary because they've been Oh, well, yeah. Okay. We'll make those changes. We'll see another draft. Okay. And we're only going to highlight the pages that have changes. Perfect. So you know. Okay. Uh, I move to we move the discussion of board governance to another meeting. Oh, second, it yes. requires her. Yes, it does. Yeah. We, table, we have to actually have to table the item. Yeah. Table, I move to table okay. item number K1. I second. 
Any discussion? No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes four zero with the presidential vote from Eli Rayma. Um, along with that will be the discussion on planning session. All right, we are going to close, but then we're going to go into closed session. Um, all right, so the meeting is adjourned. The open session is adjourned. It is 7.37. Thank you all. Great. I also have, do have a few uh, board policies in the two in the uh, thousand group, two thousand group you asked about. Yeah. Thousand group. Yeah. Pam, is this part of the meeting? No. Okay.